There you have it, just coming up to nine o'clock in Gregory Hughes. Yes, you're getting bedded in there. How are Back you? Back from a three day week, boy. Oh, dear. that's a good, that's a good, that's nice now. Wednesday, Thursday, it's your Friday's easy for you, the entertainment's not all that it's crack. It's easy. Nothing, nothing about this job's easily. Uh, just because I make it look easy, just because I show fleet oh, of foot. Oh, here we go. Don't look it. What about the. Uh, I, I, can, I can swing from the serious to the lighthearted. Doesn't mean that it's easily. Right. Just let you know that. That's okay. You feel better now? Any clues for the secret sound? See, no, that's you throwing it back at me now. Do you want me to make... Can I guess? And donate no, you to charity? No, you cannot guess. Well, no, you could do... Fair. You could donate it to charity, but no, don't put a guess. Because then if you were right then, I'd have to... I don't know what I would do in that circumstance. <laughs> you'd, have would go, you'd have to come up with a new idea. But that wouldn't be fair then to everybody else that's been trying for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. I, I don't really know. Obviously, you know I don't know what it is. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I wonder if you know what it I is. I don't know. I need yeah. to refresh my brain sometimes. Anyway, Gooch, it's lovely to see you again. And I'm going Thanks, to Hughes. bid you farewell so you can get down the road. Yeah. Thanks All very right. much. All right. Thank you. going upstairs. Yourself. Oh. Why? I want to start out my music. Okay. For tomorrow. Right, brilliant. Rather than doing it after five yeah. o'clock in the morning, do it after nine o'clock. 100%. You know, and then sense. darker mornings, you know. Okay, it's not get pretty up. at five, you know. Get up there and do it. All right, then, Lee. See you in a bit. Good morning. Uh, Donald Cavan is here with the news now. Good morning, Donald. Thank you, Greg. Good morning. The doll's been told rising fuel prices hit people in Donegal harder than in many other counties. A vote will take place in the doll tonight on a Sinn Féin motion calling for rises in fuel prices to be deferred. Temporary reductions in excise duties are ending. As a result, prices at the pumps have been rising steadily in recent weeks. During last night's initial debate, Deputy Patrick McLaughlin said when it comes to the car, people in Donegal have no alternatives. The reality is that if you're working, if you're studying, if you're trying to run a business, public transport sadly isn't an option for most people in our county. You have to have a car. The electric infrastructure just really isn't there. Uh, it's not a possibility. So, you know, if you add on, I mean, the whole issue of, of carbon tax, that is supposed to punish people for not taking better alternatives. Well, in places like where we're from, you don't have those alternatives. The Northern and Western Regional Assembly is calling for a Citizens' Assembly to be established to examine how greater levels of regional autonomy can be delivered. According to the NWRA, a policy of positive discrimination would result in rebalancing what's been a legacy of underinvestment in new infrastructure projects for Donegal, Sligo, Leitrim, Mayo, Galway, Roscommon, Cavan and Monaghan. In its pre-budget submission, the Assembly is calling for a stimulus package worth at least €570 million Euro to kickstart development across what it describes as the ailing region. An expert panel focused on Ireland's affordability says cost of living pressures have pushed the living wage up by nearly a euro. The Living Wage Technical Group says the reference early living wage rate will rise to €14.80 per hour for this year. That's up from 13 85 in 2022. It's thanks to rising energy costs, fuel food inflation and income tax. Colette Bennett of Social Justice Ireland says the budget must close the gap. So it is a significant increase but as I said it is evidence based. It is the cost, the real cost of living um, and we, what we are advocating for is that the minimum wage be, may, wage be moved towards this amount. And 42,000 people were being vaccinated weekly at the height of the COVID-19 rollout in the northwest and West. The Siltha Group has launched an in-depth report on the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination programme across the region. With more, here's Michaela Clark. The 80-page report details the challenges, progress and successes of the programme from rapidly setting up vaccination centres and satellite centres, ensuring a constant vaccine supply chain and reacting to peaks and sudden troughs of demand. The country's vaccination programme began on December the 29th at 2020, with the initial rollout focusing on healthcare workers in frontline services and the 65 and older cohort in long-term term residential care facilities. An integrated steering group was established initially in the northwest and west while responsibility for the regional vaccination programme was transferred from SILTA to HSC Community Healthcare Organisations in May 2022. At the point of transfer, the SILTA governed programme had administered 750,000 vaccinations. Weather well, forecast after a dry start, it'll become wet and windy with strong to near gale force southeast winds, heavy rain spreading from the south. Top afternoon temperatures 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. And that's Highland Radio News. We're back with news again at 10. Don't forget, of course, regular updates on our website, highlandradio.com. 
the county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the nine to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello, good morning to you. Four minutes past nine. It's Wednesday, the 27th of September, 2023. How are you all keeping? I do hope you're very well indeed. And, uh, the, uh, you've battened down the hatches. We don't have to batten them down too tightly around here. Though I wouldn't want my trampoline to be out the front garden nonetheless. Uh, and uh, we'll think on our neighbours down the country who are going to feel the wrath of Storm Agnes. Um, so hopefully it's not too bad for anyone uh, down the south um, and where the, uh, that storm will track. Anyway, we'll focus on what's happening up here. Uh, the lines are open for you right now to get involved in the conversation. Start your own 07491 25,000 outside the Republic 00353 7491 25,000 and text 08660 uh, 25,000. Did I say thanks to Donald for standing in for me on Monday and Tuesday? It's great to be back. As I said to Lee, a three day week. Where would you get it? All right, let's have a look at what's making the front of the newspapers this morning. We'll start with the Donegal Post. And uh, a man has appeared in court charged over a hit and run collision in which a nine-year-old boy was killed in Bundoran. Sergi Kelly appeared at Carrick on Shannon District Court on Tuesday morning in connection with the fatal road traffic collision on Saturday. Ronan Wilson, a nine-year-old from Kildress in County Tyrone, was killed. Kelly, a 23-year-old with an address at Upper Mollochmore County Sligo, has been charged with three offences under the Road Traffic uh, Act. Wearing a face mask and uh, a hoodie tied tightly uh, across his face so that he couldn't be identified as he left the court, I presume. Uh, Kelly was brought by uh, to Carrick uh, on Shannon by detectives. Kelly was charged with having been the driver of a vehicle which was involved in the occurrence of injury to Ronan Wilson did fail to offer said person assistance. He was also charged with failing to stop and with failing to remain at the scene, Detective Garda Shane uh, May of Balashan Garda Station gave evidence of the arrest, charge and caution of uh, Kelly. When charged, Kelly told Garda it was wrong and I should have stopped, but I didn't. After being charged with failing to stop, Kelly said I should have, but I didn't. He later told Gardy, uh, when charged with failing to remain at the scene, I know I should have, but I didn't. Kelly was represented by Solicitor John uh, Anderson. And this is something that's uh, irked a lot of people out there, and I can understand why. Gardy agreed to bail. Uh, there are strict conditions, as uh, far as uh, bail conditions can be strict. Uh, a 2,000 euro bond, uh, while a Miss Martina Currid agreed to go forward as an independent surety, which was approved by the court. Uh, he surrendered his passport and must sign on three times a week at Ballyshannon Garda Station and has been ordered to have no contact either directly or indirectly to include social media with any of the prosecution witnesses uh, in the case. So, it's kind of restricted uh, in, in what one can say in, in relation to that because it is a matter now uh, before the courts. Um, but I think we might be all of similar minds, right? The Finn Valley Voice, a local crash provider, is appealing for support at a protest at the Square, Letterkenny, today and tomorrow. Uh, Aurora McCormick is the director of Aurora's Hobbits Limited and Aurora's After School Crossroads Killy Gordon. She says early years provider will close their doors for good because the lack of government funding has made the business unviable. Ms McCormick attended the national protest by members of the Federation of Childhood Providers outside Dole Air yesterday, the first day of the three-day strike over the funding row with uh, government. What time is the protest in Letterkenny today? Though I couldn't find any information of it. Now I have access to the front page of the Finn Valley Voice uh, where is it's at the square in Letterkenny, but at what time until when? Uh, huge turnout at that uh, protest yesterday. They don't want much. Uh, they want to be able to operate a business that is essential to the running of this country. It allows people to work and go about their business. They need to be well resourced. We'll hear a little later on about how quickly government can come up with money when it wants to or when it uh, needs to or when it, it, it is, is driven to which is good it needs to of course that's fine not a criticism uh, but there is a sector here on its knees and uh, an industry on its knees that's having huge ramifications in terms of uh, people's ability to get out of the home and work and so on and so forth uh, but we'll stick with the locals for now. The Inish Times this morning. A man who threatened to burn his neighbour's children and nail them to the floorboards has been jailed. 
neighbour from hell, as is described in the paper here, Carl Ryan, was sentenced to 14 months in prison after being charged with a series of vicious threats in Bunkrana over a 13-month period in 2019 and 2020. Ryan, who has 44 previous convictions, appeared via video link from Castlery Prison. He's a 55-year-old and is currently serving a five-and-a-half-year prison sentence and is due for release in 2026. On to the Irish Times. Now, a fascinating story uh, that emerged over the last couple of days, uh, and it's in relation to what appears to be hundreds of millions of euro of cocaine on a ship, like something you would see uh, out of a TV show. Guardi believe a container ship that Army Ranger wing members were winched onto in stormy conditions yesterday is carrying cocaine worth... Uh, at least tens of millions of euros. Some estimates have it at 150 million. A number of sources told the Irish Times it was possible the haul was worth well in excess of 100 million, though that would only become clear when the boat was properly searched in Cove County Court today. The large vessel, the Panamanian registered MV Matthew, was attempting to flee when the Naval Service Ellie William Butler Yates and Air Corps helicopters closed in uh, off the county co coast yesterday. Weapons systems on the Ellie William uh, Butler Yates were fired twice as warning shots to deter the crew from persisting with their attempted escape. I thought uh, it was a futile escape. I imagine maybe they were buying time. I imagine that might emerge down the line. But I was listening to a, uh, a former, uh, former um, army general and he referenced uh, the the drugs find off the coast of uh, Donegal, you might remember, big packages of of uh, cocaine were found off the coast. And what he supposed was is that uh, what they do is um, these, obviously in this case it appears that the drugs were on the vessel, but what he says that happens is that uh, trawlers or big boats, they tow, uh, it's attached by a magnet to the boat, he said, they tow a torpedo-like device underneath the boat uh, and when they get too close to where um, they are going to offload the drugs, they release it. It sinks to the floor of the sea. And then on a timer, it opens and the drugs float to the surface. And then local trawlers or local boat I'm not saying local trawlers are involved. Do you know what I'm about? Not local trawlers, like local boats. Do you know what I mean? Or boats that are sourced locally, if, that, if you get where I'm coming from. I'm not implying that anyone locally is involved in this. Uh, vessels that are docked locally then go out to these coordinates and pick up the drugs after they've resurfaced and the boat that dropped them or dropped this torpedo-like thing that's carrying them has long since left uh, the scene and he suspects that that's what happened. They missed the coordinates or something and the drugs that washed up on the coast here, uh, that's perhaps how they were brought into the area, which makes sense. OK, uh, the Irish Independent... Sales of petrol and diesel cars are still outstripping electric vehicles in Ireland and the size of all types is ballooning as SUVs take over. The trends are the opposite of what climate action desperately needs and experts have warned the government must intervene to influence buyers' choice. Uh, that could mean extra taxes on heavier cars, uh, as is done in France and Norway, where weight-based taxes add thousands of euros to the price of bigger models. Obviously, they're going to exclude electric cars because the batteries weigh a ton. A tax on lifetime carbon footprint could also be an option, acting as a double deterrent against fossil fuel cars. Advertising rules offer another solution by obliging manufacturers to state the weight and lifetime carbon emission of their cars and carry warnings that heavier models are more dangerous to other road, uh, other road users. Now... Uh, I, I mean, that might work in, in, in Dublin where you have multiple options uh, to get around. Up here, would we really feel guilty if we were told how heavy the car was because we have to get to and fro and uh, do school runs and all that type of stuff? Um, but the parking spaces that are provided in most of our towns certainly aren't for SUVs because they're, they're almost like parking for bicycles. That's why everyone's got dents on the side of their cars. But anyway, uh, that's what might be coming down the line. But give us some alternatives. There's no point taxing us. And uh, I think it's actually been talked about in the doll by Thomas Pringland, uh, Park McLaughlin. There's no point us um, being taxed out of our vehicles if we don't have viable alternatives. So. A uh, very sad story in the Irish Daily Mail this morning. A teenage girl has died after taking part in a challenge popular on the social media platform TikTok. The teenager from County Clare died on Monday night after she was placed in an induced coma 
14-year-old had collapsed after taking part in the challenge on Friday. She remained conscious and was able to tell her mother what happened. However, she then passed out again and was placed in an induced coma. She was brought to Owned Hospital in Dublin and was then transferred to Crumlin Children's Hospital. It's understood the trend involves spraying an aerosol into a jumper or piece of clothing and wrapping it around your face. The social media challenge has already claimed the life of a teenage girl in Australia and is known as chroming. And these challenges are so incredibly dangerous because if one person does it and they may not actually really do it but appears to do it and they get multiples of likes and shares and lots of traction, uh, then others say, well, I could do the same thing without knowing the dangers of it. And we as parents often don't know at all what's going on. Well, um... A friend of the family said the girl's parents are just broken by the tragedy. He said the parents are just heartbroken. They're in total shock. They don't know which way's up. She was a very popular girl. She was just full of life, always laughing away. It's just a tragedy here. Now, I remember at school, um, when, when I was in national school, and I think you can, you, you, you know it's a long time ago, and certainly before uh, TikTok uh, or mobile phones or, or much of the internet for that matter, I think Google's, 28 years old this uh, last couple of weeks, around about that time anyway. But there were there were things that you did in the playground or after that uh, spread around the place, uh, dangerous stuff. Like, I'll not go into it because you could be spreading it yourself, but just challenges and things you would, you know, things that um, someone else did and then you should try it and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it's not that element of it, children doing stuff, or hearing about stuff and trying it themselves is not new, but what is new now is is um, how it can be videoed as well and shared. Uh, is that something that you're worried about, uh, your younger people on the likes of TikTok, knowing, not knowing precisely what may or may not happen, or is that a conversation you've had? Or are you familiar with that uh, challenge in inverted commas, 0860 25,000? OK, so the government has shook the non-existent money tree again and has pledged an additional €1 billion Euro to assist Ukrainian refugees and international protection seekers. However, Integration Minister Roderick O'Gorman could not confirm that those seeking protection uh, in Ireland will not have to sleep in tents in the coming weeks. Now, what he said was, is that we have uh, a limited amount of... Uh, we have a limited amount of accommodation. There's record numbers of people coming in, so some of them are going to have to go into tents is what he said. He never ruled it out. He says that's just the way it is. The Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth Budget Allocation for 2023 was $2.4 billion. An extra $1 billion has now been allocated in a bid to deal with the increased number of Ukrainian refugees and asylum seekers uh, arriving. So the money is there when it is needed and uh, who would begrudge um, people uh, genuinely fleeing um, very serious places getting some help. But they also maybe need to dip into that fund and look after the childcare sector because we all need to be able to access that and also probably need to start paying those in the Navy a bit of money because it's been proven over the last couple of days how important a well-funded, well-resourced Navy is in protecting our waters. Uh, back to the childcare crisis uh, on a national level. This is the Sun this morning. A childcare worker in the Taoiseach's own constituency is demanding he intervene in the sector's funding row with Minister Roderick O'Gorman as she fears we might have to close down. So the billion came out of the same department uh, to assist with our responsibilities to refugees. Uh, it comes as ministers moved to row back on previous promises to slash the cost of childcare for parents by 25% again this year. Hundreds of childcare workers and parents protested outside Leinster House yesterday to demand fair funding for the entire sector in a row that has seen many crashes across the country shut down for three days this week. Are you a person who should be at work or you want to be at work uh, but you can't because you can't afford or access childcare. It'd be an interesting side to the story that I'd love to hear today 086 WhatsApps and texts or call 07491 uh, The Irish Daily Mirror this morning, half of young people aged between 18 and 24 have been sexually harassed in the past year, CSO research reveals. One in five people have been affected by this damaging behaviour in the past year. The data also shows how 50% of men who experienced sexual harassment in the past year didn't report it. The survey showed women were over 
uh, twice, 28%, as likely to experience sexual harassment than men, 13%. Women were almost four times more likely to have experienced inappropriate physical contact uh, than men. In terms of those carrying out the abuse, almost 9 in 10 who experienced sexual harassment reported that the perpetrator was male, 87%. The CSO data shows disclosure rates were highest amongst uh, young people. OK, run through in there. Just a quick run through the papers there. 08660, 25,000. Save up to €100 Euro this week at Callahan'sElectrical.com with discount codes. Code Highland20 for purchases over 229 Highland30 when you spend over 399 And Highland100 for sales over €1,000. Shop and save online at Callahan'sElectrical.com with your exclusive Highland Radio discount code. The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 7 million euro. Play responsibly in store in app or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. There's only one thing as good as a TUI holiday, and that's looking forward to one. So get next summer sorted and secure your TUI holiday today. Choose beach lakes and cruise breaks across a wide range of destinations, including Mexico direct from Dublin, plus all your favourites like holiday villages, Splash World resorts and our own TUI Blue Hotels. Secure now with thousands of free child places and a low booking deposit of €25 Euro per person. That's next summer's holiday sorted. TUI. Live happy. T's and C's apply. It's time to transform your smile with the help of Blue Poppy Dental Letterkenny and Donegal Town. Their expert team offer orthodontics, teeth whitening, implants and composite bonding all in-house. Start your journey by calling 074 or easily book your appointment online at a time that suits you through their user-friendly patient portal available anytime, anywhere at bluepoppydental.com. Blue Poppy Dental and Orthodontics Letterkenny and Donegal Town. Medical card patients welcome. Do you work or volunteer with children or young people? Under Children First, all organisations and individuals that provide services or activities to children should have child safeguarding measures in place to promote their welfare. This includes having policies on child safeguarding awareness and training and the reporting of child protection concerns. Many organisations are also required to have a child safeguarding statement. To learn more about your obligations under Children First, visit gov.ie forward slash children first. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. Highland Radio time checks with Expressway. Travel Route 32 from Letterkenny to Dublin when you book online and travel for less. Expressway, bringing you the time at... Uh, the time is 9.21 now. Uh, good morning, Greg. I'm wondering if you could highlight the following for me, please. My dad, who's 84 years of age, was sent to hospital by ambulance on Sunday. On Monday, I beg your pardon. He arrived at ED at 1.45pm in the afternoon. He asked to go to the toilet. No one came to his aid. I phoned the department to be told that they would organise same. An hour later, I phoned back to make one simple request to bring him to the toilet. I told a nurse I was prepared to drive from Burtonport to go and assist him. Still no joy. He eventually found the toilet at 8pm. He has been sitting on a chair since arrival. He's not been given any of his regular medication. He's tired, cold and feeling miserable this morning. I phoned this morning to express my frustration. A family member is currently en route to the hospital with food, hot drinks, medication and blankets. My dad's lucky to have family who can speak up for him and bring him food, etc. While I do realise that resources are limited, surely the government can do something to alleviate this awful problem. There was 91 in ED on Monday night, uh, they say. Now, an update from that person. Uh, reveals that um, he got a bed last night at 10.30pm. So how long was he waiting on a bed? 32 hours. 32 hours. Now, can you beat that? That's a long wait for any person, but a, a full day and a half um, waiting for a bed at a hospital, an acute hospital, having been sick enough to admit. You know what I mean? It's not like he's, he's sitting there waiting just to be seen. He's sick enough to be admitted. 32 hours waiting on a bed. Right, uh, let's go to Mary Lane now on line one. Hi, Mary Lane. Hello, how are you, Greg? I'm good. How are you getting on? Well, I'm sitting at the side of the road outside Tobacory, right. on the way to Galway, in my car. Well, okay. <laughs> because I can't get a bus. Um, uh, the, uh, I, I, do you know, I, I, <laughs> I put a thing on my Facebook earlier on in the week, and that's how I've ended up on talking to you. Um, 
but I, I, I recently have had cause to now start to go to Galway on a somewhat regular basis. I've mm-hmm. never had to know before. Um, it's all kind of new to me, and I'm absolutely shocked. And I really don't mean that like dramatically or anything. I'm actually shocked at the state of the ser- the bus services to get to Galway from Letterkenny. So what's your ex- anywhere what, in Donegal. When you, like, so what times do you need buses and what's been your experience, just uh, to give us an idea? Well, I have yet to be on a, on a Galway bus, I'll put it that way. Okay. But I, I, I can't believe that there is no bus from Letterkenny that will get you into Galway before lunchtime. There is no bus that will have you arriving in Galway anywhere in the morning not half 10 not 11 not 11 59 it's what what time is it it is 12 40 before you can get from Letterkenny to Galway wow and and and, and the last bus that'll take you the whole way back to Letterkenny is four o'clock so the longest you can spend in Galway in any one day is a shorter period of time than the actual bus journey takes in any one direction mm. So I, I can't understand how this is called a public service. After putting it up on my up on my Facebook, I, so many people commented going, oh my God, it's still the same situation. I had to go to Galway 20 years ago as a student and it was terrible then and it's obviously still terrible now. So, Do you know, I, yeah, if you, no wonder there's a cancer bus. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know, that way. I know, it's terrible. I don't terrible. know how anybody... So it's if you a, need if you insane. needed to get to Galway by bus uh, at a certain time in the morning, the only way you could do that is actually to drive to Sligo. Yes, yeah, oh, okay. you have to drive to Sligo. Uh, no, you can, no, I, I, I will caveat and go, you can get from Donegal Town, mm. if you can get that far, If you um, and, and you have to get one bus, and you have to get off that bus in Sligo and wait for half an hour, and then you'll be able to get the next one. Now, maybe there is some other magical other way that I don't know about. Now, I've had loads of people saying it about private companies, feeders and whatever, but they, they're, they're, no, they're no better, do you know? And and this last bus that that'll get you to the northwest out of Galway is four o'clock. Sure, like nobody would be able to go to Galway, let's say, for a meeting or like I'll tell you what, like I need to go for for university. I I have to go um, uh, now. I was I, I'm doing a postgrad this year, and mm-hmm. I was given the option of being able to go down one day in the week and do my course for one day. Um, or do it online, and obviously I know now that it's like it's great that we can do Zoom and all that. Um, but even a couple of weeks in, I'm already seeing problems with doing it on Zoom. Um, but there's absolutely zero options for me to get to Galway to do the course one day a week. It's crazy, and, isn't and, it? And, 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 but, and like and then there's extra things like what I'm actually going down for today. There isn't the opportunity to do those on Zoom. So if you want to do them, you have to go down and like it, it just it, 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 I'm kind of I'm kind of a bit baffled that mm. that and, and like they're, 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 there's regular enough buses in the middle of the day they're kind of nearly every two hours but why not cut out a, a, two of those and put a, an early morning and a late night one you know and, and the other thing it's not even just Galway that's serviced here like Sligo was serviced on this route Knock Airport is serviced on this route mm. like you couldn't you couldn't count on this as a transport link to get to and from our closest fairly major airport in the south. Uh, you know, like I yeah. like to travel over and back to the UK a lot and I have yet to travel through um, through Knock Airport because, mm-hmm. like, you, you, could, you couldn't rely on the bus service. Mm-hmm. And and even Sligo, like, Letter Kenny to Sligo is not a bad commute. If somebody, let's say, got a job and, and they thought, you know, I'm going to try try the job for six months and do the commute before I would commit to move. Yeah. There's no opportunity for somebody to get a pre-work and a post-work bus service. Do you know, it doesn't exist. Unless I'm missing something somewhere and I'm happy to be stood corrected on it, there doesn't seem to be a pre-work and post-work opportunity there at all, even to get as far as Sligo. Yeah. And, and in terms of... Um you, you know, if you wanted to do the right thing, because we've heard today we're, we're, they're, they're talking about trying to get us out of our cars with taxes and weighing them and telling us how much the fuel they use and all that yep. kind of stuff. But yep. there has to be this a thing called a just transition, which means that, OK, we have to move from one thing to another, but we have to be helped and facilitated in doing so. Someone without 100%. a car, someone without a car or someone that will drive them around the place, and we don't all have that, yeah. couldn't do what you need to yeah. do. The only way you can actually do no. this is with a vehicle. 
your own vehicle. So no, you have to keep a car on the road. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And even like, like, and I'll tell you, like my husband doesn't drive. So if he had to do this route, he would have zero options. Yeah. Like zero options at all. Like, well, I'll tell you, the, the option would be for me to drive him to Sligo, drop him there for him to get the bus and and, and me to drive back to Sligo in, in, in the evening time to, to pick him up. Mm. Do you know, and like even, the, uh, and I went into the I went into the bus stop the other day just to make sure that I wasn't missing something somewhere because I'm not a frequent bus user. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, like even the the the, be- the next best solution for me was on my own suggestion, not from the the, the bus errand person, which is for me to get a, a like a nine o'clock bus back out of out of um, Galway, and it's, it's actually the bus that goes to Ballina, mm. and I could get off at Clare Morris and have somebody drive the whole way to Clare Morris to pick me up. All right. Sure, what? Like, yeah. do you know? It, I, I, I can't believe it. Like, and if people, like, if somebody had interviews to go to, like me, students that don't have to go all the time, but have to go sometimes, hospital people. Go, like, I'm thank God I've never had uh, the experience of having to travel to Galway hospitals. I've, I've done Dublin hospitals. It's like, and there is no wonder people had to get out of their own houses and 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 set up a bus service to take people with cancer to Galway. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm not in any surprise that that was the situation at all anymore. I. I, I kind of can't believe it. Yeah, it does. And, it and, does and I'm really wondering, like, what? And I'm wondering, like, what is the usage of those midday buses? Have they ever surveyed people and said, well, mm. like, are, like if people are using them, are they using them because that's the only option they have, or have we asked them going, well, like, if there was an earlier one, would you take it? Would you prefer an earlier one? Cut out a couple of buses in the middle of the day. Put one on early morning, and one on later in the evening. Because even like the like the last Sligo bus out of Galway is ten past six. But if you like, if you were down for something like my, what I'm going for, finishes at six o'clock in the university. Mm. There's no way I'll get to the bus stop for ten past six. So that's why I can't do that route and have somebody pick me up in Sligo. Yeah, stay where you are, Councillor Patrick McGowan. You've raised this issue with uh, the local authority before, or within the local authority. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I actually done an interview with Donald there on Monday there at the council meeting. Yeah, just just exactly uh, what that woman is saying. Now, yeah, I've been contacted not just about uh, from patients and uh, students and other people, but actually drivers from bus airing as well. They're totally frustrated because as well as what that woman uh, rightly pointed out there. Elaine. Like we actually, Elaine, yeah, we, no, Mary, we actually, yeah. sorry? It's Mary, Mary's her name. Oh, sorry. Nope. Um, yeah, good morning, Mary. Um, no, just just um, as, as well as that, we actually need something like 20 double-decker buses in Donegal, 10 for Larry Kenny and, and 10 for uh, Donegal Town because as well as that, people with free bus passes, they've been left behind because there's not enough room. Uh, you have to book online. And, of course, then... Uh, Free bus pass means that you have to pay online, which there's a charge to that. But it's all it's all of the the reasons outlined by by Mary. And another point that that's not uh, that's not looked at is that we were developing two separate uh, bus links to Donegal. We we'll split the county in two, uh, north and south. And the linkage, as you said, between Donegal Town and Letterkenny, if you want to go further in and. You hear councillors in the, in, the, in the north of the county complaining that the tourists come so far into the county and they stop. But there's, it's nearly impossible to link yourself across. Uh, uh, I also pointed out the fact that the main bus depot in the county for repairing buses and so on is in St. Order and it's not linked up. And there's an awful lot of problems. And uh, as well, the point to me is that well, we're all looking for a train eventually. If, if I can't even sit down in an office and work out bus, bus schedules where you have an integrated bus uh, that buses can sort of be le- you know, like you can be left off say in Larry Kenny in time for an express or Donegal Town if you're coming from Glen Colin Kill or any other uh, out, out region that, you know, you should be left there 10 minutes or half an hour before the express but generally, there's just, it's not integrated at all and a lot of this isn't, um, as Mary says, it isn't just about extra buses or extra expenses. It's just coordinating but, and integrating. But we also have to factor into the fact that an awful lot of the time buses don't actually even turn up. Yeah, well, th- this is... And this you is know, so it's point. not... It's not it, these... Even the current... Even the current system, people don't have faith in it. 
No, that, the, the number, all the points that I had made yesterday, and, and or sorry, on Monday, the council meeting, uh, was also as well about the lack of reserve drivers. We, there was always a panel in the past of reserve drivers, uh, and they could have been sent to the Donegal Town or Letter Kenny uh, if a bus broke down or if it failed to turn up or for any any reason. At the moment, there's no panel of reserve drivers, or very very few. Uh, plus, the the buses are too small. We need double decker buses. Plus, all the service are not integrated and the other point is as well that the buses uh, a lot of the appointments in Galway for hospitals and clinics whether it's broken arms skin grafts mm. cancer everything else could be it's nine ten o'clock in the morning and by the time you get there now I've just come on a couple of recent cases and which uh, highlighted to me and that was the reason I pushed it was that people had actually go down and stayed the night before in Galway in places like that they couldn't rely on the bus service and have an appointment and you probably have to go back several times, plus students, plus people just tourists, just anything at all. Okay. Uh, so and so you, recogni- you, you, the- you recognise the issues okay, which is good, so we're all on the same page. What about solutions? Yeah, well look, the, the answer I got back is that with under the this uh, LCDC, this is one of the, uh, the committees in the county where all the agencies come together, the county council, um, Atlantic University, um, just all of the different, it's like the county development board, and they, they have now set up a, a committee to look at this. Now, uh, Local Link is involved in it, and uh, Bus Air have, and what they're going to do is expand that committee and start looking at this. And this is what the council response to me was on Monday. And we did have quite a bit of debate on it. A lot of the members from the other parts of the county come in on the motion as well. Yeah, but has Bus Air um, been called to appear before the council? I know it's not yeah. marked this committee, but did you, yeah. uh, what about Bus Air yeah. management to come and that's what, that's explain the, fl- the flaws in their service? Yeah, that's that's what I was calling for as part of my motion. Uh, as I say, don't don't cover it very well there. Now I don't know if you're spreading the news or not, but um, we have called for that. Now that the response back from the council is that they have been in contact with Bus Air and Local Link, and that has been arranged as we speak to have everybody round the table, all the service providers, not just them, all the different sectors within the county that that have an input into it and that want to try and, and solve something out okay. because it's not. It's not a matter of extra money for extra buses and that. It's a matter of how you, how you operate the system uh, to suit the people but, but, who don't but, but, but like, Listen, the strategy from the HSC, we've heard this really quite clearly. <laughs> The strategy from the HSE is to offer services centrally from Galway. Whether we like it or not, that is the strategy. They said if you want certain services or or certain facilities, just in health alone, that you have to go to Galway. Now, at the very least, if that is a HSE strategy, which we know it is, then we should have a public service transport system that recognises that. On that one issue alone, let alone education and college and what have you, but on health alone... The HSC strategy, the CELTA strategy, is we have to be prepared to travel. Well, we have to. We're going to be taxed out of our cars and told how much they weigh, how much fuel they use. Give us a bloody alternative, at least just to match yeah, well, the health service, if nothing else. Yeah. So, like, you know, well, these are I the call, kind of questions politicians for... need to be putting yeah. directly to well, Bus Aaron I... and demanding answers, not committees and with all due respect, but we need yeah. well, look, answers. I, what I called for yesterday or Monday's meeting of the council was, which fully supported, was that because uh, the nature that we are forced to go to Galway or forced to go to Dublin, the very least we could expect is a door-to-door service. Because even being dropped off at Bus Aris or the Square in Galway is no good if you're suffering from cancer. We should be, at least, particularly for Donegal and some of the outlying counties, we should get a door-to-door service, an integrated service that takes you door to door and some of these sometimes you'd actually a proper money bus with proper seats because sometimes buses are very uncomfortable for someone if you're suffering i once had a, uh, recently had a, a lady who had mm. cancer on her back and she couldn't get transport and her son had to take her down the car because the, the hospitals and the hse would not they wouldn't provide a bus mm. or wouldn't pay for it or not it was that or a money bus or even an ambulance she actually needed an ambulance mm. so it's just not that simple, but like I agree, and, and that is one of the reasons that I raised it. And like I know other countries have raised it from time to time, but at least something is happening now. We'll keep an eye on the space to see what they do. And I think Bus Air have committed to attending the meetings as 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 local.
Medical Link and other agencies and, and the county. OK, understood. Thanks for that. And I appreciate that you raised the issue as well, uh, Councillor Patrick McGowan. But Mary Lane, with all due respect to the councillor and others, you know, we, we need action here. A caller says, by the way, just to put oh, this to 100%. you, I can answer this myself. Why would that caller look to go on a bus to go when she has a car? But I mean, that's... that's an oh, because I'm not being productive. Yeah. All I'm doing here is I'm sitting and I'm blindly driving down the road. If I was sitting on a bus, I could have my laptop out. I could be doing work. I could be being productive. I'm yeah. a very busy person. I could be doing work. And and like well, that, that's one bus engine is running. Obviously, it's bigger bus. It's a bigger engine than a car. But like I'm sitting here in a diesel car, I can't afford to change my car. Like my dad even said to me last night, he said, "Why don't you take my car?" Like he's got a hybrid car, and I'm going, yeah. "Oh, because I don't know how to drive an automatic." So now at this weekend, my dad is going to take me out in his car to to get me familiar with his car, so I can. So now we have found between ourselves a more environmentally well, better it wouldn't solution. Be, well, fair play to Dad. It, it wouldn't be me help le- me on my on my productivity. I say fair play to Dad. It wouldn't be le- me lending you my car to go down from Galway. No, and, but, no, but, but, that, but, no, but, yeah, but I'm yeah, very lucky that I, know, I have that. I know. Solution. I know. I know. Like, yeah. There's plenty of people don't even have a car to begin with, 100%. and I'm just there on the on the thing of the of the of the hospital. There is one bus bus errand bus route or bus on this route 64 that drops off at 8.50 at the hospital in Galway but it, it only leaves it from Sligo so it's not it doesn't serve as Donegal in no, the slightest no. not, not at all and like I did look I looked at, to see if I could if I could get a, a hotel and go down maybe like go down today and come back up tomorrow um, on the bus but sure it was 120 euro for, for you know so like that doesn't make sense either mm. do you know I, I would love to not be sitting in my car right now but I have to go and do what I have to do well I shan't delay you any further thanks so much for coming on and helping <laughs> us uh, highlight thanks it a take million. care of thanks yourself for Mary alright bye bye <laughs> Uh, a caller says, Mary is right. I had an appointment in Galway Hospital at 9.30 in the morning. Had to use bus and stay overnight. Five hours journey. Took six hours to get home to Donegal. I've been to America in the same time. Uh, Fela O'Donnell apparently goes to Galway. What, when at the Times? Let us know. I don't mind sharing that. Yes, agree with Mary. Attended breast clinic in Galway for a few years. My husband had to take a day off work to get me there for 11 o'clock appointment, which is crazy. Uh, that there is not a bus that can get us to Galway reasonably early. And also this notional Donegal divide, it really drives my, uh, it really grinds my gears. I don't know why it's there. It's, it's, it's there in the media, it's there in politics, it's there in, well, not so much politics now, but it's there in services and how they're provided this north and south Donegal. And then maybe you could even say in the shown's almost like a third part. You know, it's one county and needs to be treated as such, certainly in terms of uh, of the provision of services. Get involved in the conversation. 0860 25,000. Good morning to you, Anne. Good morning, Nan. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Dolores. Good, mo- good morning, Mary Jo. Good morning, Kevin. Beth, Marie, all watching the show. And I invite you, if you uh, it suits you, maybe you're at home, to watch the show live on our YouTube channel, Highland Radio Ireland, where you can cast it or watch it on your uh, app on the big screen. YouTube comes with most smart TVs. It's certainly on the Fire Stick. <laughs> And you can also watch us across your mobile devices. And we're on Facebook as well. Highland Hub, Highland Radio News and Sport. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The Donegal Cheviot Sheep Breeders Premier Show and Sale will take place on Wednesday the 27th of September in Stranorler Mart, including Cheviot Hugged Yews, Yew Lambs and Hugged Rams. The show is at 5 with the sale at 7. All Rams are SIS approved. That's this Wednesday the 27th in Stranorler Mart. This ad is sponsored by McGinty Tractors, Clar Road, Donegal Town. At Screwfix, you can click and collect over 10,000 trade products in as little as one minute. So whether it's a power drill in Port Leash or guttering in Galway, when you need it yesterday, just click at screwfix.ie and collect at your local store seven days a week. T's and C's apply. Visit screwfix.ie for full details. Do you suffer from high cholesterol, menopause symptoms, digestive issues, anxiety, aches and pains, or a lack of energy? The highly trained team at the Natural Way Letter Kenny can provide advice on natural remedies for a number of individual health issues. The Natural Way also has its own brand of herbal treatments to help fight fatigue, relieve digestive discomfort, maintain a healthy immune system, and alleviate common menopause symptoms. The Natural Way at Letter Kenny Shopping Centre, your one-stop health shop. 
Thinking of changing your floors? Why not see what Florid Letter Kenny has to offer? Florid have a large selection of solid, semi solid, and laminate click vinyl wood flooring together with a fantastic choice of parquet, herringbone flooring, all at incredible value. Don't delay. Call Florid today on 087 161 7008. Did you know Cool Kids Sligo have the biggest range of baby equipment in the Northwest with 25 years of baby expertise? Cool Kids Sligo take deposits on your baby bundle. Visit us in store at Cool Kids Sligo or shop online at babyaccessories.ie for free nationwide delivery. Make Cool Kids Sligo your number one destination for all things baby. Niromi my higletru is Kirshen Bakwar Amigone. Avuichas the board educas of his Olin and Uninal, Dolomi Fiendoy, a Jeglish and Rivra, Kodji Lom Lilitru. Bogali and Kiu Kiam Aglaku, Akanish, Neil Stoplum. Ahri and Yetrahas the Heel. Ahri Tessa the Heel in you. Foy Jagwal, Le ETB Uninal, Agus Foy Rang, a Erin Ditcher. Foy Lad a Gobru Go Jona, Le Kodji Le Dini, Foy and Jagwal, Let an Enid, ETB is Conry Ditch. Nitakiat, O Litcherhat, the She Don Seal, Real Tess Nahirin, Agus Antentis Europa. Keep your texts coming in, please. I'll get to them very shortly, but I want to say good morning to Charlie first. Hi, Charlie. Are you there, Charlie? You are on line one. Good morning, Charlie. Jacks. How are you getting on? Uh, right, Charlie, uh, what point are you making? It's in relation to our young people and driving, and I'll let you explain it rather than me uh, mess it up for, for us, Charlie. <laughs> That's fine, Greg. Uh, good morning to your good listeners, morning. and, uh, and I'm, enjo- I'm enjoying the debate because I think it's a very, a very worthwhile one. I think, you know, really since the formation of the state, I suppose, and Donegal, we've been sucking the hind tit. You know, we all, I think we all agree on that. Uh, it's, it's to do with uh, population, and, you know, the East Coast has certainly, has certainly got a... Uh, a very large chunk of that population. Uh, it's to do with politics, it's to do with votes. But leaving that aside, since uh, the debate has been opened today, I think it's very, very important to realise that our young people are very, very good young people. And they're going out at night and they're behaving very responsibly. They're getting their taxis home. But in the morning, they get up and they have absolutely no alternative only to hop into their vehicle and go to work. Now this is this is this is a very very serious situation for them mm. because they can because because they can lose their license. Now in fairness to the Gardaí, this is you know like the Gardaí do a very difficult job and they do that job well. So so this is nothing to do with the Gardaí. This is to do with us having the lack of infrastructure in the county. It's a major major issue simply because our young people. Uh, uh, continually are using, you know, are losing their licences, and by losing their licences, a lot of them ultimately lose their jobs because there's no, con- like, there's very, very little connectivity in Donegal, mm-hmm. and they well, well, just as their an example, to- just an example, yeah. Charlie, I, I, Sorry, I just want to finish, Greg. Go ahead, Sorry, I just yeah. want to finish that. If a person loses their job, what happens is. Uh, it has a massive effect on their lives and a whole lot of times it spirals into mental health mm-hmm. and not only that but but you know people become very isolated because they have no money and they end up with no hope you know so that is really you know what this debate is about today when you don't give people what they deserve like a uh, substantial infrastructure especially to get them to and from work in the morning or to and from hospital appointments you know like i mean that that type of situation cannot be accepted and it has to change yeah and, and if the truth be told like I, I can use my example i haven't been on a bus internally in the county for probably 30 years secondly my my, my children my eldest started work the only way well i was running him to and from work until such time as he got on the road and that's another story as well in terms of uh, getting lessons and also actually getting a test we speak about that all the time so i was up uh, very early in the morning or, 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 or travelling late at night to take him to and from work with everything else that's going on. But there was simply no... There was no bus, you know, there was, there was no bus that could even get him halfway there or part of the way there. Uh, you know, so young people really, if they're... Uh, just to, to your point, Charlie, because I agree with you fully, there's no choice for them, really. I mean, if you're lucky, your work might coincide with... with but it has to be pure luck. The reality is, is the majority of the bus service does not suit people going about their everyday life. You have to have a car or someone to taxi you about. That's 
correct, Greg. And I think you know sometimes, sometimes when you know when we look at you know our deprivation here in the northwest, you know, like it's probably because we've been born into it that a whole lot of times, unfortunately, that well, I suppose, I suppose, really, the people in the northwest, you know, uh, are are great people and they always dig deep and they nearly always find a way simply because if you take a look at the bus infrastructure in Donegal it's Donegal people who has helped to alleviate the problem it's all Donegal bus bus operators private operators Mm -hmm. we we have not person in this county you know, it doesn't serve any purpose in this county. Uh, like, as I say, it's the Donegal people who have set up, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever system exists in Donegal has yeah. been set up by local people. You know, so we need, oh, we yeah. definitely need Greg. Like, I mean, and thank, like, I mean, thanks to yourself and Highland Radio, like, you always open up a debate. But this is a debate that we must follow up because we owe it to our young people. For sure. And, and, you know, like the chain of events that you talk of, the impact this has on people, it's not far-fetched or an extreme. I think it's, you know, I, I think it's, 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 it's probable. I think people can go, yeah, I can see that my young people. You know, what Charlie's saying is true. It's a daisy chain effect. OK, listen, Charlie, thanks for being part of the conversation. Stay with us and, and rejoin it uh, when, we, when we re-raise it again. Thanks so much indeed. That is uh, Charlie there. All right, getting to some of your comments now after these messages. Stay where you are. Armacolla Jewellers in Letterkenny are synonymous with fine jewellery, quality watches and giftware. With stores at Main Street Letterkenny and the Letterkenny Shopping Centre or online at armacolla.com. You can choose from their quality product range in a relaxed atmosphere. And their sales staff will be happy to help you make the right choice, whatever the occasion. Armacolla Jewellers, making moments magical for generations. In the next 15 seconds, you're going to find out where is the best place in the Northwest to buy a bed or mattress. It's Restex Beds and Furniture Mountaintop, Letterkenny, where comfort meets style. A public interest message from Donegal County Council. Householders and building owners in areas susceptible to wildfires are advised to cut back or remove any vegetation or other combustible material in the vicinity of their house, building or oil tank to prevent wildfires damaging or destroying their property. Cleared areas should be maintained free of vegetation and combustible material. Donegal County Council would like to remind landowners and members of the public that under the wild Lives Act 1976 and 2000, it is an offence to cut, grub, burn or otherwise destroy any vegetation growing on any land not then cultivated between the 1st day of March and the 31st day of August in any year. Landowners are also reminded that under the Waste Management Regulations 2023, the burning of agricultural waste is currently prohibited. Donegal County Council, protecting your environment. When you start to search for a home to call your own, it's good to know that there are many ways in. Whether you're looking to buy or rent, a number of supports are now available. Different initiatives help in different ways. Some target first-time buyers or fresh starters. Some make buying or renting more affordable. Others can help you turn an old building into a new home. To find out more about the supports available, visit gov.ie forward slash doors open, an initiative of the Government of Ireland. Now, we are joined on the programme by Mary McGenra, who is Irish Wheelchair of the Irish Wheelchair Association. Mary, good morning. Morning, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you on the show. Right. Uh, As many as 5,000 healthcare staff working in community and voluntary agencies are set to take indefinite strike action in a row over pay next month. Now, these workers are in HSE-funded agencies and uh, the pickets will go up in multiple locations on October 17th. So, plenty of notice here. Plenty of room for negotiation, one might hope. So can you give us an example of these workers, the mm-hmm. workplace setting and the impact this action might have on mm-hmm. the public? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, Greg, it's important to say that strike is always the last action. And certainly people who work in the care sector, we don't go into it, you know, to walk away from our service users. Um, To give you a bit of history, um, IWA is a Section 39 organisation, which means we're Uh, funded by the HSE under what's known as a service level agreement to deliver vital services to people with disabilities. So in Donegal, we have community centres in four locations. 
and we have what's known as assisted living services, which would be something similar to home help where our staff go into people's homes, support them to get out of bed, support them for meal times, support them with medication. Uh, and of course, people with disabilities are vulnerable and many of them live alone. Uh, prior to 2008, IWA staff uh, had pay parity with their HSE counterparts. So basically, uh, like pay for like work. In 2008 and 2013, the HSE insisted that IWA uh, reduce staff wages by 20%, which we did in good faith. Uh, you know, most of the country was suffering at that time, so we had to take it on the chin as well. Uh, we took it in good faith and that it would be restored. Uh, despite numerous meetings, emails, high-level negotiations uh, with the HSE, with the department, uh, it has never been restored. Whereas healthcare assistants within the HSE have had their pay restored and indeed it continues to increase. And to give you an example, uh, a healthcare assistant in the HSE has over 20 euro an hour, whereas our staff have 15.82 an hour. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, for parity, us, it's parity that, that you're looking for or, or yes, are you looking for the gap to be closed? We are looking for parity, like pay for like work. Um, it Our service users are vulnerable. However, uh, since COVID, our service users are very aware, both within home support and in our community centres, that we've had to reduce our services because we cannot recruit staff, obviously, uh, over four euro difference per hour if there are two posts going, one HSE, one with IWA or another similar Section 39 organisation, then of course an individual is going mm. to go for the job that pays more. We all would. Uh, so... We're having difficulty recruiting staff mm -hmm. and the staff that we have, they're in danger of being burnt out because we all worked through COVID again, like many others. That was our job. We did it and we did it willingly. Mm -hmm. uh, so the government has the key to this. They mm -hmm. can solve this. You're right. There's loads of time for negotiation. Now, let me ask that, you, because it was mm -hmm. a little short in time. Is there yep. is the motivation here uh, just to, to keep the purse strings tight? Or is there a, 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 an underlying motivation here to bring these services back in-house? No. Um, we For IWA, we deliver the services on behalf of the government. Mm -hmm. They are essential services. Yes. Basically, if they could deliver them themselves, they would. I'm sure they would. Okay. Right. You know, and we are person-centred. We take great pride in our services. Mm -hmm. And our staff at the moment are stretched. And, you know, they are in danger of burnout. And... We currently are looking at all options leading up to the 17th and talks continue. Uh, we are asking the government to do something. They can do it. You know, the money tree, to quote yourself, when it's needed, can be shaked and is frequently shaked. And we're asking our local representatives, our five TDs, to get behind us. We need all of the Section 39s. Uh, we need pay parity because the sector is crumbling and people... With disabilities will ultimately be the ones that suffer, and that's not what we want. You talked about being backed. Those service users are backing you. Many of oh, them, they, are. they understand they the are. work that you do, and yes. they, they understand that this is going to mm -hmm. uh, cause inconvenience. They hope it can yes. be def uh, can be avoided, but they, mm -hmm. uh, I understand, are supportful, uh, mm -hmm. supporting because they get it. Yeah, they do, Greg. Um, we have been very open with our service users. Since COVID, I have had to reduce uh, the community centre services within Donegal by 36%. That has had an impact on people throughout the, country, uh, throughout the county uh, because we don't have the staff, we don't have enough accessible transport, so we're limited. Uh, we do a customer survey nationally once a year, and 78% of our customers, our clients, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. them, uh, they support us and they are all concerned for their services because people coming into community centres, they're meeting friends, they're getting out, it's respite for the people at home. And then again, for others who have people coming into their homes to support them get up in the morning, mm -hmm. to support them with personal care, meal times, that is, it's physical contact, social contact, 
it's the difference between being at home possibly and being in a nursing home. For sure. That's that people need to see the bigger picture. Mary, as this month progresses, uh, yeah. or, or, or this three weeks, mm. we'll speak again yeah. for sure. Uh, this was just a, <clears throat> an opening conversation. Mary McGren, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Take care. Have a lovely day. Back with more after the news and obituary notices. Due to popular demand, iMotors have extended their sale until the 30th of September with over €150,000 of reductions across all stock. This is not to be missed. At iMotors, test drive any car and enter our draw to win €1,000 cash. Yes, €1,000 to take a test drive. Ends the 30th of September. When you buy, choose one of the following offers. 12 months tax, free ceramic coating, 24 months warranty or your first finance payment covered by us. Low finance rates available. Check our website for all T's and C's. You will not want to miss out. Visit iMotors.ie for more details. Sometimes it's just bad luck, but sometimes it's negligence. From minor bumps to life-changing injury, every accident has a story. Time to call McElhenney and Associates. They'll assess the situation, advise on solutions, and lead the way if any litigation is to follow. From motor accidents and workplace accidents to slips, trips, and falls, call today on 074-917-5989 or find us online. Let's get you started on the road to recovery. McElhenney and Associates Solicitors Stranorler. How can we help? In contentious business, a solicitor may not calculate fees or other charges as a percentage or proportion of any award or settlement. At Evolve, we're all about connecting people. Our network is the newest in Northern Ireland and we're the first to confirm biomethane ejection into the grid. Right now, you could reduce your carbon footprint when switching from an old and efficient oil boiler to a new gas system. You can also enjoy instant heat and hot water on demand. Take control of your energy costs with a pay-as-you-go function from as little as £5. Upgrade your heating today by visiting evolvenetwork.co.uk. The Queen of Country and Irish, Margot, comes back to Donegal for one night only. Join Margot live in concert on Wednesday, the 4th of October, in the Mount Derrigal Hotel, Letterkenny, with special guests, David James and Shuni Cramsey. This is a show not to be missed. That's Margot live at the Mount Derrigal, October 4th. Tickets available from hotel reception or online at eventbrite.ie. Welcome to the Donegal Lost and Found Sounds, brought to you by Specsavers Hearing Experts, who are helping the community rediscover the joy of ordinary sounds. Peter in Bally Buffet writes to say he smiles every time he listens to the sound of his kettle boiling for his morning cup of tea. And in other great news, Catherine in Milford has rediscovered the sound of popcorn popping, just in time to watch her favourite films. Whatever sounds you've lost, Specsavers hearing experts could help find them again. Book a free hearing test today at your local Specsavers. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app, this is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's 10 o'clock. Donald Kavanagh at the news desk. A thorough search will be carried out today on a cargo ship detained off the Cork coast yesterday. Warning shots were fired by the Army Rangers as they boarded the vessel during an operation which also involved the Irish Naval Service, Revenue, Customs and Garthi. The ship, which has been brought into Cork Harbour, is understood to contain a significant consignment of illegal drugs. It could be the largest haul ever seized here. The operation is thought to be linked to a fishing trawler detained off the coast of Wexford on Monday. Three men have been arrested. Thonishta and Defence Minister Micheál Martin says the operation is linked to a wider international crackdown on drugs trafficking. This was part of a pan-European collective intelligence operation uh, and it underlines the importance of cooperation uh, on an ongoing basis, both internationally and indeed domestically, because domestically what you're witnessing here, both within the military, the, the Joint Defence Forces, uh, the Air Corps, the Naval Services and the Army Rangers, uh, all working uh, seamlessly together. The Northern and Western Regional Assembly is calling for a Citizens' Assembly to be established to examine how greater levels of regional autonomy can be delivered in Ireland. According to the NWRA, a policy of positive discrimination would result in rebalancing what's been a legacy of underinvestment in new infrastructure for Donegal, Sligo, Leitrim, Mayo, Galway, Roscommon, Cavan and Monaghan. In its pre-budget submission, the Assembly is calling for a stimulus package worth at least €570 million Euro to kickstart development across what it describes as the ailing region. 
The Dáil's been told that rising fuel prices hit people in Donegal harder than in many other counties. A vote takes place tonight on a Sinn Féin motion calling for rises in fuel prices to be deferred. Temporary reductions in excise duties are ending and as a result, prices at the pumps have been riding steadily in recent weeks. During last night's initial debate, Deputy Podig McLaughlin said when it comes to the car, people in Donegal simply have no alternatives. The reality is that if you are working, if you're studying, if you're trying to run a business... Public transport, sadly, isn't an option for most people in our county. You have to have a car. The electric infrastructure just really isn't there. Uh, It's not a possibility. So, you know, if you add on, I mean, the whole issue of, of carbon tax that is supposed to punish people for not taking better alternatives, well, in places like where we're from, you don't have those alternatives. An expert panel focused on Ireland's affordability says cost of living pressures have pushed the living wage up by nearly a euro. The living wage technical group says the reference hourly living wage rate will rise to €14.80 per hour for this year. That's up from €13.85 in 2022. This is because of rising energy costs, food inflation and income taxes. Colette Bennett of Social Justice Ireland says the budget must help close the gap. So it is a significant increase, but as I said, it is evidence-based. It is the cost, the real cost of living. Um, and we, what we are advocating for is that the minimum wage be, wage be moved towards this amount. Today marks the third anniversary of the last time missing man Cian Langelin was seen. In a social media post today, Gardaí and Donegal say the last known sighting of Cian was on Sunday, September 27th, 2020, in the Horn Head area. He was 27 at the time. Gardaí say Cian has been reported missing from the Fulcara area and hasn't been seen or heard from since. Anyone with information in relation to his whereabouts is asked to contact Gardaí. 42,000 people were being vaccinated weekly at the height of the COVID-19 rollout in the northwest and west. The CELTA group has launched an in-depth report on the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination programme. With more, here is Michaela Clark. The 80-page report details the challenges, progress and successes of the programme from rapidly setting up vaccination centres and satellite centres, ensuring a constant vaccine supply chain and reacting to peaks and sudden troughs of demand. The country's vaccination programme began on December the 29th at 2020, with the initial rollout focusing on healthcare workers in frontline services and the 65 and older cohort in long-term residential care facilities. An integrated steering group was established initially in the northwest and west, while responsibility for the regional vaccination programme was transferred from CELTA to HSE Community Healthcare Organisations in May 2022. At the point of transfer, the CELTA Govern programme had administered 750,000 vaccinations. Well, the forecast, well, we're going to miss the worst of Storm Agnes here, but Matera and tell us it'll become wetter and windier through the morning and into the afternoon with strong to near gale force southeast winds veering westerly and easing for a time later. Heavy rain spreading from the south this morning will continue throughout the day. Top temperatures today 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. And that's Highland Radio News. We're back with news headlines again at 11. Don't forget regular updates, of course, on our website, highlandradio.com. For now, from the news team, have a very good morning. The obituary notices for this Wednesday morning, the 27th of September. The death has occurred of Sister Eileen Byrne, SSL, St. Louis Convent, Monaghan Town, and formerly of Stranorder, Donegal. Her remains will repose in St. Louis Convent, Monaghan, from three o'clock until half past five today for sisters, family and friends. Requiem Mass tomorrow in St. McCartan's Cathedral, Monaghan, at 11, followed by burial in Latlurkin Cemetery. The Mass can be viewed online on mcnmedia.tv. The death has taken place of Mary Gillespie, Moira Wiley, Nae McFadden, Kosh Claddy Bunbeg, formerly of Glenthornan, Dunluwy. Her remains will repose at her home today and tomorrow from 11am to 9pm with Rosary Knightley at 8pm. House private pleas from 9pm each night and on the morning of the funeral. Funeral Mass on Friday morning in St Mary's Church, Derry Beg at 11, with interment afterwards in Maharagallon Cemetery. The Funeral Mass can be viewed live on Kieran Rorty Funeral Director's Facebook page. The death has taken place of Sarah Sally Lynch, St Columkill Village, Clonmany, formerly of Ballyargus, Redcastle. 
her remains will repose at St Columkill Village Oratory today from 12 noon until 6pm. Removal from there tomorrow evening at half past six to St Columbus Church Drung, reposing overnight. Funeral Mass on Friday morning at 11 with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. The Funeral Mass can be viewed live on mcnmedia.tv. The death has taken place of Paki McGinley, Hillhead Ardra. His remains will repose at his residence from 11am to 10pm today with rosary tonight at 9 Funeral from there tomorrow morning at half past 11, going to the Church of the Holy Family Ardra for Requiem Mass at 12 noon, with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family flowers only please, donations in lieu of desired, to the Alzheimer's Society care of any family member. Packy's funeral mass can be viewed live on mcnmedia.tv. Family time please, before the funeral tomorrow. The death has occurred of Grace Ann McGarvey, Nay Sweeney, Balaness Falcara. Grace Ann's remains are reposing at her home in Balaness with rosary tonight at 8 o'clock, house private please after the rosary and before the funeral tomorrow. Funeral tomorrow is at 12 noon in St Finian's Church, Falcara, with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. The mass can be viewed live on mcnmedia.tv or Sweeney Funeral Director's Facebook page. Family flowers only, please. The death has taken place of Lexi McCloskey, 91, Ardnamoyle Park, Chantalo. Funeral from his home today at 12 noon for half past 12 Requiem Mass in Our Lady of Lourdes Church, Steelstown, with interment afterwards in St John the Baptist Cemetery, Carrigart, County Donegal. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu if desired to the Foyle Hospice. The death has taken place of Sinead McLaughlin, name on teeth, for Hillview Boncrana. Removal from her residence this morning at quarter past ten, going to St Mary's Church, Cock Hill, for 11 o'clock Requiem Mass, with burial afterwards in the adjoining graveyard. The funeral mass can be viewed online at churchservices.tv. Family flowers only please, donations in lieu if desired, to the Irish Coast Guard Search and Rescue Helicopter 118, care of any family member. The death has taken place of Michael McFadden, Killult and Ardsbeg, Gortha Hork. His remains are reposing at Sally Brennan's residence in Ardsbeg, Gortha Hork. Funeral from there this morning for 11 o'clock Requiem Mass in Christ the King Church, Gortha Hork, with burial afterwards in the adjacent cemetery. The funeral mass can be viewed live on mcnmedia.tv. And the death has taken place of Professor Paul McKevitt, Moville. Funeral Mass tomorrow Thursday morning at 11 in St Pius X Church, Moville, followed by burial in Ballybrack Cemetery. The Funeral Mass can be viewed live on movilleparish.com. For more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. The Euro Millions Mega Draw is back and it's pretty big. It's actually massive. This Friday, the 29th of September, the Euro Millions jackpot will be a guaranteed 130 million euro. It's just too big to miss. The National Lottery. It could be you. Play responsibly. Play for fun. The county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. Good morning to you. Eleven minutes past ten. You're very welcome back. It's Wednesday, the twenty seventh of September. How are you all keeping out there? Really do appreciate you being on board with us. We have another two hours to keep you informed and entertained. Bar the shouting, and our lines remain open for you. Uh, lots coming up, by the way. So don't tune out later on. Lisa Lochry is a pension specialist. She's going to be joining me in studio here to answer any questions you might have in relation to pensions. Now, this is an area that I'm not really too up on. I should be. I'm not, but there you go. If you have any questions about pensions, uh, when it, is it too late to start a pension? What do you need to be putting away? What might you achieve? Uh, how safe are they? Uh, and all that kind of stuff. Any questions on pensions? 086 60 25,000. 086 60 25,000. Or give us a call on 074 91 25,000. And I'll get your questions directly to Lisa and get your answers as well. There might be something that you've been discussing recently or you're planning on doing something and you want to know what the story is, uh, I suppose we all should be planning. But I just think sometimes with the cost of living, many of us can't really afford to be paying into a pension and 
Maybe we're short-sighted. Who's to say? But anyway, might be able to help you. We will be able to answer any questions. Might be able to help you uh, make up your mind. As I say, 0866025000, your WhatsApps and texts. So give us a call on 0749125000. And just to remind you, by the way, that if you wish to send an audio message to us, that's no problem. You can uh, hold down the little speaker on your phone and WhatsApp it to us as well. So that's uh, an issue you want to raise or a comment you want to make. So feel free to send voice messages to us as well. Uh, good morning, Greg. In this day and age, or sorry, in this weird, weird, weird age, you say males were the likely perpetrators of uh, sexual assault, but who's to say what gender they were going by? And otherwise, they're only surveyed on a male and female harassment. One out of trans survey. Well, I'm sure those figures are there, but um, it's very easy to forget that the percentage of people that identify as anything other than male and female is tiny. It is absolutely tiny. Some, the way some people react, you'd swear it's like, you know, uh, uh, they're going to overthrow the nation or something. It's a very small percentage of the population, a tiny little percentage of the population. Um, so I don't think uh, even if those figures were counted, and I'm sure they are uh, because they'll have an other, I didn't see the other figure, uh, that it's anything for you to worry about. Um, there's very few people that I identify as uh, anything other than male and female, though, though many, though some do it, uh, in the wider population it's a tiny amount of people so you've nothing to fear they're not going to come and rob your house uh, they're just trying to get on with their lives why don't the church open up parish halls or vacant parochial houses to accommodate refugees and homeless even better why don't parish priests in rural Donegal offer up spare bedrooms in parochial houses for such purposes maybe they do I don't know a caller says his daughter pays 15 euro per day return to Derry on the bus from Manor but if she gets a lift to convoy or a foe the bus is only 1 euro each way on local link okay and is she getting the student rate there uh because uh, uh maybe it's because it's cross-border she can't apply for that but or maybe she's not a student for that matter i'm presuming she is that's expensive that's more than i would spend on uh, diesel or petrol um commuting to and from work a much greater distance 15 euro per day uh read the government funding the government is setting aside billions in funding for the refugees when the children's care system amongst other services are on its knees we're not allowed to say this without being deemed a racist of course you're allowed to say uh, without being deemed a racist um why would you who would call you racist for saying that and and you know refugees and uh, asylum seekers they have kids too so i presume they would uh, welcome proper funding in childcare services i get where you're coming from by the way i'm not i'm not feigning shock but uh, you should be and can say that we're spending billions on our, our commitments to refugees and, and um, international protection. Well, let's use also some of the billions that we're saving for this rainy day uh, and make sure that we fund childcare correctly. I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't think it's racist. Uh, this caller says Irish uh, people are second-class citizens in our own country. I know that's pushed around a lot, but, but if you just think about it and you think of the accommodation these people are in and what have you, uh, you know, international uh, international protection person gets thirty eight euro per week. Um, that 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 doesn't put them ahead of of, of Irish, I, I don't think. Um, and and a lot of the people, asylum seekers, are living in hotel rooms, which would not be a solution to our housing crisis here for Irish people either. Uh, so I don't think I don't think we're second class citizens. But I I certainly do get that uh, people are angry that more money needs to be found for other services, which would also benefit the 140 odd thousand uh, extra in our population over the last year. Shocking, actually, in terms of um, I was looking through the statistics on my time off, which is kind of funny because you take time off work and you're busier. <laughs> There's loads of jobs end up being lined up for you and what have you. Uh, but anyway, um, it's nice to get to work for a break. Uh, joke. But um, the amount of people emigrating in this country is absolutely shocking. Or is it shocking? I don't know. It's up to you guys to think. Uh, 64,000 people emigrated from Ireland in the year to April of this year. Now, 30.5 thousand of those were Irish citizens, but 64,000 people emigrated from the Ireland, half of them Irish citizens, less than half actually. Uh, but then when you think that the amount of people that did their leaving cert this year was 62,000. So in terms of people emigrating from Ireland, more people emigrated from Ireland than actually sat their leaving cert. Isn't that remarkable? 
Um, big trouble with transport at night time. You can't get a taxi and you have to depend on parents. Not fair. They have to stay up or get them out of bed or a friend to come. Uh, something has to be done like a taxi or bus service. It depends where you are. Uh, express bus to Dublin, Route 32, not express. Four and a half hours to go to Dublin, uh, stopping far too many times. Uh, another with billions being paid for mass immigration. It's surely time that people were consulted on the most contentious issue of the age. We need a referendum to ask if we support the new, new EU uh, migration deal. Uh, good morning. I had an appointment in Galway too a few weeks back, very early in the morning. And again, my husband had to take time off work. We had to take the two children because of no sitter. Stay over in a hotel. So the total cost was around... Now, this is for an appointment in Galway. This is the Garfridge family, uh, mum, dad, two kids. €650 Euro to go to a hospital appointment. That's including hotel, diesel, parking, food. It'll be much uh, simpler this quarter says if a bus was provided. Another, it's a disgrace that sick people have to travel. Full stop, it's a disgrace that these services are not sorted locally. What about these top-of-the-range primary care centres that took mega money to put up? A bloody disgrace. I know a few people that have cancer and have to travel for treatment. It's 2023, it needs to be addressed. We're, I mean, you can get some treatment locally, but the bottom, it, it seems, there's got centres of excellence are the future, and there be uh, there seems to be no appetite within the HSC to change that. Greg, the infrastructure is so poor in Donegal. For example, the main road from Bunkrana to Derry is chock-a-block every day with cars and long queues going into Derry every day, nearly backed up at the border. Why can't there be a tram even on this route alone? It would save on cars and do a lot for the environment. We were recently in Manchester and so many trams and trains to take you anywhere. We are being failed and are so far behind. It's embarrassing. No planning, no forward thinking. Uh, and on it goes. Uh, Bus Feeder provides an excellent service from West Donegal via Letterkenny to Galway. It's especially dedicated to students with late buses on Sunday and Thursdays and Fridays for students and drop-offs at their accommodation for safety. It also has uh, added a service to Limerick University, a brilliant, reliable service by a private operator indeed. And we are talking about sort of you know, state-provided uh, transport. My son applied for his driving test two weeks ago and got a text this week to say it will be February before he's considered for a date. Donegal is a forgotten country for everything, never mind rail. We can't even get a bus. And may I say, and, and just a, a word of warning, particularly as we come into winter and a lot of days there won't be any tests done at all, that's an estimate. It's very likely that come the start of January, that could be pushed out to March or April. And that's when he's invited to apply for a test. So, as I say, I'm not being... I'm not being negative, but the truth is, is that um, I wouldn't be get, I wouldn't be starting uh, planning to start a job with the view of having a car in February off the back of that estimator because it's notorious for pushing the date back. And as I say, there's going to be a lot of cancellations over the winter. Uh, I appreciate that people are concerned about the lack of a bus services, but it does boil down to finances. As a bus operator who's going to run a bus service to accommodate five to six people, it's just not practical. The private services are there and they're fantastic, getting our children to and from school and uh, all of that kind of stuff, subcontracted from Bus Erin. Uh, they provide, you know, uh, links to different parts, of the, um, different parts of the country. They do that on a commercial basis and make money and do fantastic services. But there is a core service that needs to be provided by uh, a semi-state company such as Bus Aaron, uh, in other words, to get us around at times that's appropriate. So if they are perhaps saying that from now on, you are most likely going to have to go to Galway for certain medical procedures because that's the way it's going to be done into the future, well, then surely you need a proper bus service to take that into consideration, and that's uh, what we don't see. OK, uh, it is time now for us to take a break for the bingo numbers. Good luck if you're playing today. Here they are. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Wednesday the 27th of September. You're playing on the blue sheet. The reference number is S13. It's game number 39. The numbers are 29, 57, 26, 73, 14, 48, 20, Eight, thirty-three, and finally eighteen. Phone your claim to nine one zero four eight double three before eight tonight. Leaving your name, contact number, and the name of the shop where you purchased your book, and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your NCBI bingo information at HighlandRadio.com. 
Brian McCormick, Sports and Leisure, your football specialist. Adidas football boots in many ranges like Crazy Fast, Copa Pure and Predator Accuracy. Puma King Ultimate, King Top, King Future Match for kids and adults. Available in a mixture of soft and firm ground. Adidas socks and shorts, gum shields that can be remolded to improve fit. Match up your boots with Adidas or O'Neill's set of socks and shorts. Brian McCormick Sports, your football specialist. Click on bmcsports.ie or call in Main Street Larry Kenny. Discover Cooney's Home Interiors, where your dream space comes to life. See it, love it, own it. Our suites, tables, beds and accessories are all ready to impress. With fast delivery to your door, your perfect home is just a visit away. Cooney's Home Interiors, your style, your way. Check out Sister Sarah's, the ultimate gastro pub experience in Netherkenny, with a fresh, exciting new menu. Why not celebrate your special occasion in one of our three private function rooms? You can catch all the live sport on our 12 screens daily, with some of the best live music and entertainment in the Northwest every weekend. In Sister Sarah's, serving food you'll love from Wednesday to Sunday. The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 7 million euro. Responsibly in store in app or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Okay, you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show here on uh, Highland Radio, and we are going to be talking about pensions. And we invited you to message in any questions you might have. We'll get to those, but we'll have a, a general uh, chit chat because this is Pension Awareness Week, in case you didn't know. Lisa Lochry is Managing Director of John F. Lochry Financial Services. Good morning to you. Morning, Greg. Thanks for having me in. How many of us have pensions? Do we know, not an official figure, <laughs> but is it more do than don't or don't than do? Uh, definitely more don't than do. Mm. Um, that would be the, the predominant thing in Ireland. But um, I suppose the average pension pot in Ireland was about 100 to 150,000. So... You know, some people think, oh, you know, a pension is, is far too big. I, I don't earn enough to be able to fund for a pension, you know. But when you look at the figures and you look at the average in Ireland, it's not, you know, you can you can save that much over your lifetime. So you can probably put that much into a pension over your lifetime. Yeah, and there's different cohorts of people here, isn't there? Because there are those maybe entering the workforce now versus those who are 45 and, also, and all of a sudden they're thinking, well, you know, I don't have a ton here and can I live on the state pension? So let's start off with people just starting out in work. Um, but what is the situation now in terms of auto enrolment uh, 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 and uh, where are we at in terms of those plans? <laughs> That's a good question. Thanks, I like to start off um, with a good tea. <laughs> it's a tough question. <laughs> the last time I spoke to you, I told you auto enrolment was due to be kind of the infrastructure set up in 2023 and that contributions would have to be started from January 2024. We're not there yet. Mm. Um, there's still no word of that. It's kind of been put back to, you know, the second half of 2024 at this stage. So, but I mean, that has been put back numerous times at this stage. They did kind of blame COVID to a certain extent, which is fine. Everybody had to sit back a bit. But, you know, at this stage, like if, if you're coming into the workforce, um, if you're young, you know, and, and the younger generation are actually a lot more aware of pensions and a lot more savvy, um, you know, and, and the older generation are actually now looking at that as well. So you're coming to a stage where the entire population are thinking about it more now. I'm under no illusion. Pensions are not, you know, the topic of the week. They're boring. Nobody wants to think about them, but they do know they have to think about them and they're starting to think that way, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, I think it's the name. I think if they called it like older person fun fund, <laughs> you know, like know. the fun fund or something. I think it's back to pen. But we'll, we'll get through uh, people starting off and, and, and when you can join in. But there's there's a reality here that we have an ageing population and that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but that's why we're having conversations about the retirement age and what have you, because there's a basic, basic maths here that we could end up with uh, a smaller cohort of people trying to fund a, a bigger uh, pension pot. Yeah. So then you have, like, because we sort of say, well, could I survive on the... 280 or whatever it is at the moment but is it going to be 280 are you going to get it when you're 65 66 67 yeah. so we we can't we actually don't really know in 20 years time you know a 50 or 40 year old what the situation will be then so there is a big problem and it's right across the world isn't it yeah. because we don't know what state pension might be there and when it might be 
available to be drawn down. That's just a reality. Exactly. No, and I think that's that's obviously what the government are trying to make provisions for because they know that, like at the minute, you know, the state pensions two hundred and sixty five euro thirty a week. You know, that's roughly thirteen thousand eight hundred per annum. But the way we are with the workforce, there's so many more people coming into retirement now than there is coming into the workforce. Yeah. So, like. That's how the pension system is sustained at the minute. That's now unsustainable going forward, you know. So and can I throw another spanner in the work? Yeah, if you go don't on mind? ahead. <laughs> home, home ownership. A lot of people at retirement age now do own a home. Mm-hmm. As the generations come through, uh, there's going to be the pressure of, of rental accommodation <laughs> because home ownership is not going to be achieved by as many people as it was in the past. So maybe if a, an older person has paid off the mortgage, there's a security there and that 13,000 can, you know, go a bit further. But we yeah. are, there's already people in that situation, but we're going to see more and more people in the situation whereby they're also having to pay rent still. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, 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 and rate, you know, uh, housing uncertainty. So again, that's perhaps why you don't want to leave yourself reliant on the, on the state pension alone. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely the way. And that's why they are trying to, you know, put in the auto enrolment system, you know, it, it definitely will benefit the workforce, um, you know, because people who haven't thought about it, it will make them actually have to address it. Um, it's going to be an opt out system rather than an opt in. And that's they've done that on purpose. And um, they've seen it working in, in other EU countries. So basically, everybody will be automatically enrolled in the pension system. And um, so once you're from 23 to age 60, and you're earning more than 20,000 euro per annum, you will be enrolled in a pension then it's up to you to actually actively opt out of that pension. Mm-hmm. And they have found that, you know, a lot more people will stay in because, you know, as much as people don't like to think about it, neither do they bother opting out sometimes of these yeah, But I think it, it, it being a part of your wage or a deduction from it sort of normalises it, doesn't it? So um, in terms of um, how much you really need to be putting in, so we start with someone, say, maybe 20. Four, yeah, well, do you know what, I, you, what, what? What typical examples do you want to give us? Yeah, I don't know. I did a few figures Perfect. just knowing that I'd be coming in just to give you an idea. And these are very basic, so it's just to give you an, an idea. So I suppose if somebody put in €100 Euro, um, per month from age, so I've kind of, you know, tiered Perfect. it. So if you if you just started at age 30, because realistically a lot of people don't mm-hmm. think about it. <laughs> They're lucky if they start at 30. So you can expect a pension pot there. If you put in €100 per month from 30 to age 65, about €100,000 fund at the end, okay? So that's not kind of saying, okay, I'll start with 100 and I'll increase it or anything like that. You're just doing that throughout your working life. Right. Now, say, for instance, you did that to the age of 35 and then you became unemployed uh, for a year. What happens if you don't maintain that payment? Can you can you stop and pick it up? Or because people might go, well, I don't know if I can afford it into the future. So I mean, obviously that would then affect your your pot at the end. Yes. But yeah. can you pause and resume depending on your financial Absolutely. situation? Absolutely. And to be honest, if you're not earning, there's no point in making a pension contribution mm-hmm. because you only get the tax relief on uh-huh. earnings. You know. So, um, by all means, what you would do is just not make contributions while you're not working. When you restart, um, then you're going to, you know, restart your contributions if you can up them a little bit to try and make up for the the lost time. All well and good. Like what I would normally say to people, and I know, you know, everyone's finding it tight with the cost of living and everything at the minute. But equally, people are now getting pay rises and, you know, incremental increases in their Mm -hmm. pay. And that's very much, you know, I think employers are very aware that they have to do that at this stage. Mm -hmm. Um, If you can afford to do that whenever you get a pay increase, just put even some of it and um, say, no, I'm going to start a pension with that, <laughs> you know, because mm-hmm. then you haven't seen it coming into your pocket. So you're never going to miss it, yeah. you know. And I think, too, if, if, if the truth be told, I think the majority of us really don't have a full grasp on our income and, well, maybe the income more so, but our outgoings. Yeah. If you know what I mean, like, uh, we probably don't. Uh, so, in other words, you, if you had a look at that, you could probably find the money somewhere, depending on your situation. So, in terms of, you know, tax relief and what have you, how is that €100 Euro treated? Uh, it does cost us €100. Euro. Does the state add anything to it or do we get tax back? Or how does that work? OK, so I suppose there's two different things. The auto enrolment will be slightly different. Mm. Um, but as it stands at the minute, so it depends on what rate of income tax you pay. So if you pay, um, just pay tax at the 20% rate, then um, if you put in €100 Euro into your pension, it'll cost you 80 So you'll only see your pay okay. reducing by €80. Euro, OK, because basically instead of taking the €20 Euro tax off, 
they're actually allowing you to put the full 100 euro into the pension. Mm. And then if you're paying tax at the higher rate, so if you're putting 100 euro into your pension, you'll actually only see your pay reducing by 60 euro. Okay, so there's there is definitely. So you're benefits. saving. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any interest rate that comparable to that. No. So you're saving a uh, hundred euro for eighty euro or for sixty euro, dependent on your income. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. I kind of if if you look at another way around, because I thought I, I was trying to think how to maybe phrase it better so that people get a better understanding of what they're doing. And I thought, well, if you're going into retirement, you know. There's very few people probably go into retirement with no nest egg, mm -hmm. right? It mightn't be a pension, but they'll have a property or they'll mm -hmm. have savings put aside. So I thought, well, if you had 100,000 of savings, okay, to the junior, well, that's going to be my nest egg and that's what I'll live off. If you think about it, if, you know, it, whenever, if you paid tax at the, the lower rate even, it took you 125,000 euro worth of your income to save that 100,000. Mm -hmm. And equally, if you were on the higher tax rate, it actually took you 166,000 of your pay to save that 100,000. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you had just put that into a pension rather than taken it as earnings and kind of saved it personally, you would have either 125,000 or a pot of 166,000 yeah. without any growth. Mm -hmm. You know. Got you. Um, now, uh, pet people might be nervous about pensions because, you know, dipping into pension funds crashes, uh, in pension investments disappearing. I lost everything. I've been paying in for this for years. Are there any protections on pensions like there are on savings, for an example? What do you say to people who go, you know what, I'd prefer to pump it into my property because the bricks and mortar will be there. Well, yeah. In Donegal, you wouldn't know, but you know what I mean. Um, so, so how safe is this money that you're... You're, you're putting away. Yeah, I mean, like the insurance company. So for a pension in Ireland, you have to do it through one of the insurance companies, okay? And the insurance companies, there's never been question marks over mm. the insurance mm -hmm. companies in Let's Ireland. Bring us a little closer to you. Yeah, sorry. If yeah. you um, if you kind of try, if you start maybe taking a bit more risk and you're moving to like random funds that maybe aren't the, the run of the mill funds, then you are starting to take more risk because maybe they're unregulated products. If you go into a regulated product, there has never been one of those defaults. But it's in risk Ireland. and return, isn't it? And some it's people split it up a little bit, don't they? Yeah. And they go right. So oh. I mean, like anybody coming into us, and it's a lot more regulated now. Like the first thing we have to do is complete a risk profile questionnaire, and a risk profile questionnaire is going to kind of give us an idea of how much risk somebody is or isn't willing to take. So I mean, within any insurance company, they have a range of funds, but um, and the funds range in, in terms of risk from a one to seven. So a one is a cash fund. So you can essentially go into a cash fund. Now, for a few years there, the cash funds, if you went in, you were getting a negative return. It wasn't much, but you were going marginally down in value. Um, today, like the cash funds with the insurance companies are given about 3.5% return. You know, and even if you have a 1% annual management charge, you're making 2.4% mm -hmm. without taking any risk whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Right. So now let's go up a little bit. Someone's 50. Yeah. Starting to panic now. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just around the corner or it feels like it's just around the corner, even though they've probably got maybe, you know, 16, 17, 18 years left of work. Is it too late then? Like, is there a point it's too late to start putting in in a pension no like well if i go back to my figures you're you know if you're still only putting in the 100 euro per month from age 50 to 65 you've obviously your your period's mm -hmm. a lot tighter you've only the 15 years you're looking at a fund of about twenty five thousand at that stage rather than the 100 okay and um, now the only thing about that like people do oh, that's a, one question oh sure i'm too old mm -hmm. you know I, there's no point in me starting a pension at this stage if you have been working somewhere for a while and, you know, you could manage to put away that 25000 in your last, you know, 10, 15 years or whatever, you can probably take that full amount as a tax-free lump sum at the end. Mm -hmm. Because if if you're working for somewhere for an extended period, you can actually fund one and a half times your final salary to take as tax-free cash. So other people who have a fund of 100000 they might only be able to take 25000 of it as tax-free cash and the rest has to be taken as a pension over time or you know as, as pension income whereas like there there's definitely the first thing you can do is fund for a tax-free lump sum at your retirement so there's every point in doing that because as I said if you go back to the thing if you took the 25,000 as cash you're either only going to get 15,000 or 20,000 into your hand Okay. So, well, actually, that, that comes in as a question. So, okay, perfect. Uh, you, we're using the 100K as an example. Yeah. So if you've managed to fund a 100K pension as it stands now, yeah. how much of a pension do you get at retirement? Okay, so um, if we go... Do you know what? I'm going to use 
a hundred and yeah, we'll go with 100,000, sorry. It's only rough figures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, there's there's two, there's a few different things then. So I, I'll just kind of give you a, a rough rundown. There's two different ways you can draw the tax-free lump sum out of it. So it's either going to be as um, 25% of the pot. So you might be able to take 25,000 as tax-free lump sum. And then the other 75,000 you have to use to... Um, buy an annuity okay so annuity rates at the here minute. comes the calculator everybody <laughs> annuity Who rates said pension yeah. people were boring <laughs> ah come on now <laughs> okay so the other seventy five thousand has to use, be used to buy an annuity the annuity rates are roughly you can get an annuity for about five percent at the mm-hmm. minute so i'm just going to use that so that would give you uh, an income of three thousand seven hundred and fifty per annum Okay. Okay. So you've taken your twenty five thousand as tax free cash, then you can take your um sorry, I've that the wrong way around actually. You can fund for one and a half times your final salary mm-hmm. and you have to buy the annuity. So if you say somebody's on forty thousand, right? They can fund for a tax free lump sum of sixty thousand. So okay. one and a half times your final salary. Right. So sixty out of the hundred would go into your hand as tax free cash. Then the other forty you'd use to buy your annuity. So that's giving you a pension then of two thousand euro per annum along with that. And what happens if you pass away before the remainder so of that pension is drawn down? That, that's the, the these are kind of the things that you have to think about, and it's it's individual to every person because you know everyone has different circumstances and different family circumstances. But with that route, so you've got a higher tax free cash. You've got your sixty thousand into your hand, your two thousand pension a year. But when you pass away, the two thousand pension dies with you mm. essentially okay unless you've provided for a spouse's pension which sometimes you can provide for a 50% spouse's pension mm-hmm. or a guaranteed period of 10 years so if you're within the 10 years it would continue up to the 10 mm-hmm. years um, the other route then which has been more popular would be where you take 25% of the pot as tax free cash so that's 25,000 mm-hmm. out of the 100,000 the other 75,000 in that circumstance is it invested Similar to what you were investing with before you you drew the pension. Mm. So you're investing with an insurance company, you choose the fund, you're obviously trying to make a return, and then you have to take an income of about four or five percent from that per okay. annum. But you could choose to take a lump sum out of that equally. Mm-hmm. So you you're taxed at your income tax rate on any pension um income. So be that the two thousand out of the annuity or be it whatever you're taking out of your approved retirement fund, the four or five percent. Um so what you're doing at that stage is that you're trying to make sure you're either paying very little or no tax if possible. Yeah. OK, so this is why you need a pension advisor, really, because... Uh, do you know what? It's it, very complicated. I, honestly... Uh, I probably is, lost you there. No, you didn't. Did no, you've explained it. What I thought was, right, that you saved... Uh, I thought that you you saved for a pension, you get a 100 grand, and it's an extra 10 grand a year into your pocket for 10 years, or, like, it was your money... Right, and that if you died two years later and you'd only took 20 grand, that, that 80 grand would become part of your estate, but it's not yeah. like that. Well, th- that second example, so the approved retirement fund where you take, so you've taken 25,000 tax-free cash, mm. the 75,000 goes into the approved retirement fund. That approved retirement fund does pass to your estate okay. on death. Right. Okay, so that's the difference between the two routes. You Understood. Know. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm being overtaxed this quarter, believes. Yeah. Well, I think they, they believe they're paying, you know, the, Excess. Uh, I'm oh. not paying into a pension, but if I was, would it reduce my tax? Yes. Um, so, like, I mean, they would see, they would, it depends on if they're employed, they should see it on their pay slip that if they're, they're putting in pension contributions, you know, they'll, they'll pay less tax. Um, if they're self employed, and this is where it's more obvious, and this is where Pensions Awareness Week comes in, because for self employed people, the income tax deadline now is the end of October mm-hmm. or the 15th of November if you do your uh, pay and file online. Okay. So, with that, you've earned your income all throughout the year, but then you're hit with this big tax bill at the end. Yeah. Um, so, whenever you're hit with a tax bill like that, you know, if you have a tax bill of 5,000 euro, say this mm-hmm. person, if they're self employed and they have to pay now 5,000 euro, if they decide to put 5,000 euro into a pension, and they're paying tax at the higher rate. So if they think they're paying a lot of tax, they probably are. Um, so that means that actually there's €2,000 tax relief they'll get. So their €5,000 that's going to go to the tax man is reduced down to 3000 So they're kind of putting 5000 into a pension and then they're reducing their tax by 2000 So there's 3000 going into 
the tax man. So yep, I get you. It's All kind right. of that's going to cost Money them eight, into their pocket, but yeah, okay. five of it's gone into their pocket you. again. You know, my husband did a pension plan all his life, but any time he had no work and had to sign on, the pension was taken into consideration, and he could never get the full dole money. Mm, I haven't come across oh, that before. I mean, I've... normally, if if you're paying your um, stamps, you you'll get. You know your your illness benefit. I haven't seen a pension being taken into account yeah. against it, but that's not to say it hasn't been. Can I ask a question about a pension? Can you check an old work pension if you've no paperwork? The business is closed now. Is there a yeah register? yeah? Because this is the thing. Like loads of people, you know, you did you maybe worked for five years at the beginning of your career and moved on, and then you know people don't realise they have these wee pension pots sitting about the place. Um, so basically, if you come into a company like us, we get you to sign. It's called a letter of authority. Um, we're able to send that to all of the insurance companies. So once we have your name, your date of birth and your signature allowing us to make an inquiry on your behalf. Um, so basically, you know, we've done that for numerous people because, you know, people go, I did have a pension. I d- it might have been Irish Life. It might have been New Ireland. Mm. And obviously they had it through their company. So it might have been John F. Lohry Financial Services and John F. Lohry's not there anymore and they don't know where to go, you know. So you come in, sign letter of authority, we can kind of blanket all the insurance companies with it and get any information Brilliant. on any okay. pension Useful. policies you have. So. Um, I think we've been covering this because this is an early text. Um was just wondering, how do I go about setting up a pension and who do you go to set up one and how safe is it on 29? So you've talked about the safety element of it. I presume you go into a, a company like John F. Lohry, uh, John F. Lohry Financial Services. Yeah, and, like, and I mean... The I suppose there are kind of, you can go and start looking online, but I have to say, like the pension legislation and regulation and everything, even in the last two years, it has changed so dramatically. Like we're learning things every day in the industry. Mm. And it just, like I would strongly recommend taking advice on it, you know, and if you go to a brokerage, it means, as I said, like we have access to all of the insurance companies. So some of the banks might be tied to just a particular company. Uh Whereas, like, if you go to um, somebody who's not tied, then it means, you know, they're accessing Mm. everybody on the market for you. A caller says, I'm 56. Is it too late for a pension? And how much would I need to be investing at this stage to benefit? Well, it's how much you'd want to sort of get get out. So if you could afford 400 a month. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you gave the 100 a month example, so it would probably be about 18, 19, judging by the figures you give for someone who's 50, right? So, I mean, it depends on how much they can afford. But what would be the advantage to that 56-year-old putting that in a pension versus just putting it into a a separate account? Well, as I said, they're getting full tax relief on it, so... You know, if they're That's if they're the paying tax one, at all, it? yeah. Mm. But if they're paying tax at the higher rate, they're getting you know forty percent tax reliefs, and like you'll never you'll never take that money personally and get a forty percent return on it, or mm. you know it would mm-hmm. have to be. But like, um, they should be able to put that away, and from age sixty, they can. There's a possibility they'll be able to take that all out as tax free cash. So I mean, they can put in at this stage, you'd be throwing in as much as you can afford to yeah. get tax relief on it, and in four to nine years' time, depending on when you want to retire you know, get as much of that as tax-free What if your circumstances change, you lose your job or something, or you're squeezed, a medical emergency, you need to access funds? Can you access pension funds? Um, So pensions, generally, it's from 60 to 75. Now, if you have left an employment, there is a possibility you could access your pension from age 50. Okay, so they're like these paid-up pots of pensions where we say from previous employments, You've technically left that employment, um, you know, and there, there is every chance that you can access that from age 50. That's as it stands now. There is kind of talk again that, you know, legislation around that could be changing and um, they might increase it to 55. But as it stands right now, if you have a pension from a previous employment, you can actually access that from age 50. So again, you know, definitely worth making an inquiry about. Um, you know, and as I said, go to somebody that's maybe impartial or not even the company that you, it's with or that you took it out with because they might, you know, they will give you every option, but every option can look daunting when it's in mm. front of you on a page. You know, they'll send you out retirement options and there might be six options and you're going, I, there, there's too much detail yeah. here, you know, to get into the nitty gritty. So it is, it, it, there's an awful lot in this that makes us bury our heads in the sand and not do it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and anyone I've spoken to in, 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 in financial circles, and not just those that provide services, say that this is something, because you have to plan, you have to say, well, what is your situation going to be when you hit retirement age? The reality is as well, too, people are going to now 
there's a lot of people now that will comfortably live well into their 80s, 90s and even perhaps beyond. Yeah. Uh, right, so uh, I think we've outlined Is there anything important that you think we need to add in there, um, um, Lisa? No, I mean, there was a couple of wee things like the auto-enrolment when it does come in. You know, some people are saying, oh, I'll wait for auto-enrolment because mm. it's going to come down mm-hmm. the line anyway. But we've and already seen it deferred a full it, year. Yeah, yeah. till there. Um, if you're on the lower tax rate, auto enrolment will benefit you because the the tax relief on an auto enrolment pension is essentially going to be about thirty percent. So, if you're on the on the lower rate, it'll make every sense in the world to go into your auto enrolment scheme. If you're paying tax at the forty percent, it's probably still going to make better sense for you to make personal pension provision. Mm. Will both products be available side by side, though? Obviously, they will. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Um, but as I said, the tax relief is higher. Mm. If you're paying tax at the higher rate, you're going to get more tax relief by doing a, per- a personal plan. Right. So fi- finally, say I'm that twenty-nine year old, um, and I'm I'm going to write. I need to do something here. Do I make an appointment with your your company or a similar company? We sit down and yeah. you go, "What's your income? What do you hope to achieve?" Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and and say for instance you talked about the two different types of pensions can you adjust midway through yeah i mean you know that's the other thing just because auto enrollment's coming in doesn't mean you can't start a pension now and then when auto enrollment comes in you can opt into your scheme you know through your work and and we'll tell you honestly like if that makes more sense you know you're better to do it but your other pension is still there in the background Mm -hmm. and can be let sit you know and, and you can still use it at retirement like i mean any money you put into a pension it doesn't go away it doesn't disappear it'll always be there to benefit you at your retirement you know so no i, I would definitely kind of say look at it sooner rather than later especially when you're younger the biggest thing is probably affordability and if you can afford to start a pension at all or you can afford to put in anything that's a big thing because when you're that age you don't know what your career is going to bring. No. You know, you don't know what family circumstances you're going to have. You have no idea what age you might retire at. So you just, based on affordability, start a pension. And then once you have it started, you're much more inclined to monitor it and keep an eye yeah. on it. And I then know, I hear say, people oh, go, oh, I've, I've, I'm, I'm due this and that at this stage. And I'm like, stuff you. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> you need to get I'm on the ball. People. I'm glad <laughs> for people. Lisa Lockery, Managing Director of John F. Lockery Financial Services. You can search them out if you want to speak to uh, the company. Thanks for joining us and uh, give us a handout as part of Pension Awareness Week. It's been no lovely problem. having you in Thank studio. Thank you for having me and absolutely Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Keep out the cold, cold, cold and ring Fleming for their full range of garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. Fleming, 91 48 234. Autumn is here and so are the new arrivals at Green Shoes. Shop in store or online now from top brands like Doc Martens, Kate Appleby, Tommy Bow and Riker. Also New Balance, Wonders, Echo and many more. Shop LK and one for all gift cards accepted in store. Visit Green Shoes and discover the perfect footwear to complement your style. Green Shoes at Market Square, Letterkenny Shopping Centre, Fulcara and online at Green Shoes. Choose.com. PDO Thread Lifts and Skin Boosters, which rejuvenate the skin by improving facial contours, lifting and tightening the jaws, neck, cheeks and eyebrows, are available at Genesis Aesthetics and Skincare Clinic Gidor. To choose the right aesthetic treatment for you, contact Mary Ferry, your aesthetic practitioner. Also offering fat dissolving treatments, dermal fillers and laser treatments for all skin conditions. Hair and makeup packages also available. Genesis Aesthetics and Skincare Clinic Gidor, 07495325. The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 7 million euro. Play responsibly in store in app or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Join us for the Highland Radio Hooli in the beautiful resort of Sulu from the 14th to the 21st of September 2024 for a week of non-stop country music and crack. Join me, David James, alongside some of the biggest names in country music. We've got the legendary Margot, the sensational John McNichol, the fabulous Robert Mazel, Claudia Buckley, Olivia Douglas, Hugo Duncan, Jim Devine, Sean Cuddy and many more. Your package includes seven nights of pure luxury at the four-star Saul Costa Girada Hotel with dinner and breakfast included. You'll have access to all the incredible shows, poolside entertainment, airport transfers and a delicious dinner every evening. All this for just €817 per person sharing. 
Don't miss out on this unforgettable experience. Book your spot today by contacting Country Music Tours on 074 91 or email info at countrymusictours.ie. The Highland Radio Hoolian Saloon, 14th to the 21st of September. It's the country music extravaganza you won't want to miss. We'll see you there. Okay, welcome back uh, to the 9 till noon show. 0866025000. Uh, loads of you texting in on pensions. Uh, some of them comments and not questions, so we'll get to them in a mo. And uh, plenty on buses and everything right across the whole spectrum there, so we appreciate it. Now, you will know that we have uh, been covering... Uh, the situation here in Donegal in terms of uh, disability services and the re- availability to young people. It was triggered off the back of uh, parents and, and caregivers receiving letters saying that the, uh, the CDNT services weren't available to them. Uh, OP, uh, speech and language. We've heard numerous stories of uh, parents who have feel their children are missing out. Uh, they're, they're six years of age, haven't seen anyone. Um, it, it's an, an awful situation. We talked about recruitment as well. That is a big issue, but we know now that the families are saying, well, what can you do for us right now in terms of availing of private services, uh, emergency provisions, whatever it might be? So there's two tra- there's, tra- there's two trains here, right? One train is the, uh, the, the, long, the medium to long term in terms of recruitment, hiring people, sorting out this crazy nonsense of the recognition of, of Northern Irish qualifications. People from Donegal who want to work here can't because they can't jump through these hoops and wait a year to earn money. Um, but then there's the more short and medium term. Can they do a national treatment purchase type fund deal uh, to get these young people the invaluable services, the essential services that they re- need right now. Uh, this has also been taken up by politicians, of course, Councillor Albert Doherty amongst them, who joins us on the programme now. Good morning to you, Albert. Thanks for your time. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, listeners. Right, so you raised, uh, what was the question, uh, truncated if possible, that you put to uh, the HSE? Yeah, I asked HSE Disability Service to review, evaluate, the rules and the positions deemed required. I asked them to prioritise the filling of such vacancies. I asked them to analyse and review the effectiveness of their panel system. And I also asked that they look at the the lack of availability of uh, speech and language therapists, OTs, physio, uh, physiotherapists, and all of those that... Uh, should be available, accessible, and there for our families. And yes, I did attend the community meeting on September 5th. I was shared the letter that the parents received, and it was a, a very, very tough reflection on our situation. So, where so sorry, I'm going to HSE yeah, I'm gonna have to move it forward a little bit, Albert. Sorry, and it's our fault because yeah, we're sorry, through yeah. before the news. No, it's not your fault. No need to apologise. But we know there are 37. Uh, vacancies at the moment. We know uh, services are being provided to the most serious of cases, but we've spoken to very serious cases, no services for them either. What did they say to you that's in any way useful? Yeah, a number of things, but just I wanted to say that when they give me a good analysis of how the three areas of um, CDNM were affected there, CDMT. You know, it jumped out as me as well that Donegal East and Nishon had uh, 56% of approved posts that were vacant, that Donegal North had 58%, and Donegal Southwest, thankfully, had, and I shouldn't say thankfully, Leslie had only had three, uh, 14%. So the HSE has got to look at that as well. But the HSE have now promised me that they will commence an action plan to further develop measures to attract C- uh, staff into the CDNT. They also emphasise something else, that it will take national level measures in addition to local measures. Mm. And that inspired me to put a motion for the attention of Minister Rabbit, who stormed out of a meeting down south when 14 posts that had not been approved Sitting up here in Donegal, we're sitting on 35 posts. And we learned yesterday that CAMS, that there's uh, up to 11.6 posts that could be filled up here. And uh, I now want to see progress on this emergency action plan. And I want to see national and local measures taken. But I also want, and I've involved 
um, ETB, as well as the Council, I want to see how we as a region can explore what's preventing uh, would-be applicants from the north. But we know what uh, that is. We know what that is. It's it's the long, drawn-out process of recognising these qualifications. It's uh, additional and that qualifications that Coru, require... Coru has... Coro and our national politicians have a job to do to ensure that there's a more accessible, mm-hmm. progressive, welcoming role mm-hmm. in registration uh, from the various parts of the world. Are either of your party colleagues, uh, Pierre Stoherty or O'Par McLaughlin, going to raise this issue in the Dole on behalf of Donegal parents? Most certainly. This is an issue that I've long stood with and I will persevere uh, until the children of our county... Mm can have equal access, equal opportunities mm. um, and deserved opportunities to access uh, therapists and support in the county. For sure. We appreciate the, we appreciate the, 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 the political attention locally, but we need these parents and these stories heard at a national level, I think, also. Listen, Councillor Albert Doherty, again, I'm really sorry that I had to rush you through there. Yeah. I appreciate your time, though, and uh, we'll go through that response in a little bit more uh, detail. It doesn't really tell us anything we didn't know previously, and until they get this recognition of uh, qualifications, things sorted. There's no point having job fairs up in Derry uh, and, and recruitment drives there because people know the system is so convoluted that it is not worth their time going through. Summer may be over, but the need for storage is just beginning. Dealside Garden Furniture brings you the perfect solution with a full range of sizes in garden sheds, outdoor canopies and much more. Safely store your barbecue, patio furniture and outdoor toys. Dealside Garden Furniture Lifford, made to measure and one-off designs are our speciality. Find us on social media. McDade's Bathroom Plumbing and Tiles Showroom in Bunkrana is your one-stop solution for all your bathroom plumbing and tile needs. We offer a wide range of top quality plumbing fixtures, tiles and accessories, all at the best possible price. Our experienced plumbing experts will help you choose the right products for your bathroom, renovation, new construction or remodeling project. Visit McDade's Bathroom Plumbing and Tiles in Bonkrana and see why we are the best choice for all your bathroom and plumbing and tile needs. How we use electricity can be smarter, cleaner and greener. At Electric Ireland, we can help guide you there. You see, our new Net Zero hub has all you need to know about smart meter plans, home EV charging, solar panels and much more. Making your usage clearer, your trips greener, your home cosier and your world brighter. Find our Net Zero hub at electricireland.ie. It's the home of the vegan butchers, the artisan bakers, the freestyle lyricists, and the trouser suit striders. It's the urban jungle, where the everyday meets the latest wave. And you could see it all from your Seat SUV. From the sharp lines and smart style of the Arona to the bold and beautiful Ateca. And if size is your thing, the Turaco comes as a seven-seater. See what's in store at seat.ie for our latest offers. And visit DMG Motors, Claw Road, Donegal Town. Because your new Seat is just waiting to see what's next. McElhenney's Home Value event has begun online and in store with amazing offers that you do not want to miss. A massive 30% off La Cruze tableware, 50% off selected bedding and towels and 20% off the entire Orla Kylie collection. Visit us in store or shop online at McElhenney's.com for the biggest home value event of the year. For exclusive offers only available at McElhenney's department store, Bally Buffet. Opening this weekend in Bundoran World Matchmaking Festival in four venues with the Tumbling Paddies, Derek Ryan, David James, Johnny Brady, Kieran Rosney, Abba Esk, Blind Date, Speed Dating, and much, much more. Tickets at the door. Log on to showtours.ie for full details. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. OK, it is 11 o'clock. Let's get a news update and it's over to Donald Kavanagh. Thank you, Greg. Good morning. A thorough search is taking place on a cargo ship detained off the Cork coast. Warning shots were fired by Army Rangers as they boarded the vessel last evening during an operation that also involved the Irish Naval Service Revenue Customs and Degarthi. The ship, which has been brought to Cork Harbour, is understood to contain a significant consignment of illegal drugs, up to two tonnes, it's believed. It could be the largest haul ever seized in the state. 
The Northern and Regional Assembly is calling for a Citizens' Assembly to be set up to establish how greater levels of regional autonomy can be delivered here. According to the NWRA, a policy of positive discrimination would result in rebalancing what's been a legacy of underinvestment in new infrastructure projects for Donegal, Sligo, Leitrim, Mayo, Galway, Roscommon, Cavan and Monaghan. In its pre-budget submission, the NWRA is calling for a stimulus package worth at least €570 million. Euro. The Dáil's been told rising fuel prices hit people in Donegal harder than in many other counties as they have no alternative to the car. A vote takes place tonight on a Sinn Féin motion calling for rises in fuel prices to be deferred. Temporary reductions in excise duties are ending and as a result prices at the pumps have been rising steadily in recent weeks. The relationship between the Garda Representative Association and Commissioner Drew Harris has been described as irreparable. The GRA has formally requested that the date for changing rosters on the 6th of November be removed or deferred during a meeting. However, speaking ahead of a special delegates conference taking place in Kilkenny today, the Association's President, Donegal-based Garda Brendan O'Connor, described that meeting as futile. And today marks the third anniversary of the last time missing man Cian Langelan was seen. In a social media post today, Gardaí and Donegal say the last known sighting of Cian was on Sunday, September 27th, 2020, in the Hornhead area. He was 27 at the time. And there are the headlines, regular updates on our website, highlandradio.com. Back with headlines again at 12 noon. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Donald. We'll be back with much from War on the 9 till noon show after we take this break. <laughs> The Donegal Texel sheep breeders will hold a sale of 83 rams in Rafomart this Friday the 29th at 7, with approximately 50 SIS scheme eligible rams available on the day. Online bidding via the Mart Bids app. That's this Friday at Rafomart. It's the last week of Foy & Company's biggest ever furniture sale with up to 50% off in our Letterkenny and Bally Buffet stores. Huge reductions on all our dining room sets, beds and mattresses, also on sofas, lamps, rugs and much more. Now is the time to reserve and order to ensure delivery in time for Christmas. You can also shop our sale online at foys.ie. Finance is available. Inquire in store at Foy & Company Letterkenny and Bally Buffet. Say ends this Saturday 30th. Like lower prices on everyday essentials? Then make Aldi top of your shopping list. Essentially, Aldi have lower prices on, well, the essentials, including 12 chicken nuggets was $2.49, now $2.19. 8 Al Cafe Cappuccino sachets was $1.99, now $1.65. Magnum baking paper 10 meters was $0.99, cent, now $0.77. Cent. And 2 Roosters Chicken Quarter Pounders was $3.79, now $2.49. You won't just like more value, you'll love it. Save up to €100 Euro this week at Callahan'sElectrical.com with discount codes. Code Highland20 for purchases over 229 Highland30 when you spend over 399 And Highland100 for sales over €1,000. Shop and save online at Callahan'sElectrical.com with your exclusive Highland Radio discount code. Supports are now available to refurbish vacant or derelict properties. Drop in to one of the events being hosted by Donegal County Council between Monday 25th of September and Thursday 5th of October 2023 to find out more details. No appointment is needed. For details of locations and dates, visit donegalcoco.ie or visit our social media. The Olive Grove Pizzeria is now open at the new Smokes and Grills in Letterkenny, serving freshly made, mouth-watering pizzas every Wednesday to Sunday from 1. Due to demand, the opening offer of a 12-inch pepperoni pizza for just 7 50 is extended until the end of October, available to sit in or take away. The Olive Grove Pizzeria at Smokes and Grills in Riverside Retail Park, Letterkenny. Call 911-3333 or see Smokes and Grills on Facebook. What's golden, crispy and downright delicious? That'll be our scrumptious bird's eye chicken goujons. Made with 100% chicken breast and coated in the crunchiest of crumbs, you could say they're the ultimate champion of the chicken universe. Feeling bougie? Serve with a salad. Feeling cheeky? Dunk into a sweet chilli dip or just enjoy as a midnight snack. You know where to find us. In the frozen aisle, of course. OK, you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show here on Highland Radio. And we're going now to a very wet-looking um, letter, Kenny. Aurora McCormick, director of Aurora's Hobbits, is there. Hiya, Aurora. How are you keeping? 
get cold and a bit wet down here. <laughs> I know, but it's important, isn't it, that you uh, you, you, you take this stand. We saw huge numbers uh, down in Dublin and people gathering in various locations right across the country. Just in your words, Aurora, as a as a, a you know a director of a, a business in this area, uh, how important is it that funding is increased? We need it badly at the minute. It's got an knock-on effect on everything. It's not helping the staffing crisis. It's not helping to actually open the doors at the minute. We're kind of struggling to keep going with the way the core funding is. So we're out here protesting for better money, better funding, so that we can keep doing what we love every day. And it's an important part, as we've said a thousand times on this show, it's an important part of uh, life. It's not just the work that you do. It's not the the care for the children and bringing them through. It's allowing people to go to work, to contribute to the economy, to get them out of the house. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It's an important part in, in many facets of life. Yeah, definitely. All right. And... Um, you so had to close today. Not everyone can close, obviously, because, you, you know, there's financial complications and implications for that. Yeah, we closed for the three days. So we were up in Dublin yesterday. So we took off at seven and went up to the protest and everything. And back last night at eight o'clock and then back up this morning up here to Letterkenny after we dropped our kids off to school and things. Had to pull the grannies out to help us because we have no childcare. And um, down here today, down here tomorrow as well. And the reality is, is what you want to be doing now is be at work and, and, and looking after and caring for children. You don't want to be standing out in a wet, dreary market square in Letterkenny. No, definitely not. What was yesterday like? So many different people from all around the country coming together in what was a, a powerful statement to government? It was lovely to see us all because we're all struggling. We're all Because we're all spread out and it's all a caring environment and stuff, the last thing we want to do is go up there. But we all pulled together and we went up and we did the protest and everyone's on the same boat. No one's, everyone's struggling. Mm. But like, that's what I was saying to the girls yesterday on the way home on the bus. Like, the last thing we want to do is to cause havoc, but it's the only way we can get recognition that we need better funding in here. Like in August, before I signed into the core funding, I had to sit down and do all the counts and stuff and see if I can put the money back on the parents, which I can't. Everyone's on their knees. It has to come from the government. Like, I can't put that extra euro on a parent. They can't afford it. It's, it's, it's not fair. Yeah, and, and the increases are, are tiny. They're, they're silly money, really. The pence, pennies, yeah, euros, yeah. you know what I mean, cents. And like inflation's at the highest it's ever been like, but we're stuck in we're, our freeze, fee freeze at the minute. So we can't up them. And even if you could, you wouldn't have anyone coming through your doors because no one can afford it. Everybody in the country is on their knees right now. So it has to come from the government. They have to support us. They have to give us they have to give us better pay, but they also have to give us back our title of educators. They've taken that away from us. Like, and we need to be we are educators. We are the first people that the children come in and see. We we help with everything. And a lot of people have, you know, really good qualifications and effectively earning minimum wage as well. I, I, yeah. I mean, they're not going to stick around for very much longer. Yeah. And it's not helping our staff crisis at the minute. Like, it's very hard to get people in. And then whenever they're in, it's very hard to keep them whenever the wages are so low. Of course, listen, parents are going to be inconvenienced by this and it's a sickener. But they get it too. A lot of parents, whilst they know this has created complications for them, they, they support what you're doing because they understand why you're doing it. Yeah. Right, so you're there till one thirty today, yeah, yeah. and you're back and tomorrow. tomorrow. What time tomorrow? In case people want to come down and join you, if the weather's a bit better. Tomorrow, I don't, I don't think it'll get any better. Tomorrow, half ten to half. I'm trying to be optimistic again. here, Aurora. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting in an office. I'm on a market square here with an umbrella. <laughs> all right, okay, yeah, all right. I get you, and you're one hundred percent right. Listen, come here. Uh, we wanted to speak to you just to, to offer our support as well to what you're doing down there, and we hope a resolution is found soon because we know the department that you're engaging with are issuing billions left, right, and centre, uh, and we just yeah. hope that they 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 uh, recognise the importance of this sector to society as a whole, not just the sector itself. And back yous. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. All Bye. right, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. All right, that's Aurora McCormick there, director of Aurora's Hobbits. They're down at the uh, Market Square in Letterkenny until 1.30 today. Back tomorrow again uh, between 10.30 and 1.30, I think. So if you want to give them a bit of support... Um 
they do great work um, and for not great reward uh, either, I think is a, a bit of a consensus there. Shall I do a few comments on the pensions? Uh, do self-employed get anything? That was addressed there as well. Uh, retirement, if when you retire in order to live the manner you're accustomed to, you have to keep working. Yeah, uh, possibly, unless you're in a massively uh, massive uh, income job. Uh, a pension is the government's clever way of slowly, slowing, stopping the state pension. And if so, why are we paying for a high percentage of PSI? It's not for our pension. Uh, hi, Greg. Do we not pay the tax when we're, we're we taking the money out when we get to the age? Uh, nothing for free. Yeah, indeed, that was covered. If you work all your life paying into a pension and you die before the pension pays out, what happens to the pension? Well, there's two types of pensions. Uh, both were referenced uh, there. Um, what about the government taking a tax off the pension funds at present? That comes in from Liam. And other people should definitely save for their pension at present. For every pensioner, there are four workers by 2050. It's expected that for every pensioner, there'll be two workers. That's unsustainable. Therefore, in the future, either the rate of state pension will reduce or the age will be pushed out or additional substantial taxes will have to be applied to workers. There is a pension time bomb on the horizon. Yeah, indeed, um... I think we'd uh, all uh, agree uh, with that. OK. Uh, Kieran Fitzgerald, a former Guard Ombudsman's Commissioner and RT producer who's paralysed and wheelchair pound uh, following an accident in 2016, uh, joins us on the programme now. Thanks for your time, Kieran. I do appreciate it. Good morning, Greg, and thank you very much for having me on the show. No, it's uh, it's uh, it's our pleasure. It's a very it's important. Um, spinal injuries Ireland. They've published a pre-budget submission calling on this government to automatically provide medical cards to people living with a spinal cord injury and to do so without review for a period of ten years. So I suppose the starting point is what's the current lived experience of of many people. Well, the current lived experience of people with a spinal cord injury varies, Greg, because the injuries and the level of severity of the injury can vary. But on average, people suffer uh, limited mobility, very often paralysis. In my own case, for example, I'm classed as tetraplegic or quadriplegic. So that's wheelchair bound with you know limited movement of fingers and arms as well. Um, that's the most obvious thing that you would see if you met somebody with a spinal cord injury. What you might not see are some of the hidden things, like the fact that people have bladder and bowel control uh, is, is very often gone. So people have to wear catheters, colostomy bags. Um, and the other hidden thing is that that in itself can lead to being prone to uh, infections like So there's the very obvious stuff that you could see if you met somebody with a spinal cord injury, but then there's also the very hidden stuff that you don't necessarily see at first glance. Yeah, and, um, and it affects, yeah. Uh, obviously, every part of the country. In Donegal, there's 78 Donegal people we know of living with a spinal or, uh, cord injury. Uh, what? Why is uh, automatic... Uh, access to a medical card uh, so important that it was one of the key submissions of this pre-budget submission? It's important for people because, uh, firstly, when people suffer a spinal cord injury, which can you know can happen any time, and mm. uh, through a simple fall or a car accident or a you know a work accident, whatever it might be, um, your life is turned upside down, Greg, almost immediately, mm. and your world will never be the same. Uh, the first thing the HSE do then is uh, do a means test. Uh, so they check out a person's finances to see if they qualify for a medical card. Uh, the bar is very low. If you earn more than €164 Euro a week, you will not pass that uh, means test. So in fairness to the HSE, they then operate a discretionary system. And... They, they will give a card on discretionary grounds, taking in your whole circumstances, the severity of your, uh, your impairment and all the rest of it. And of the 2,200 service users for Spinal Cord Injuries Ireland, we estimate that about 700 don't have medical cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the importance of it, which is, in fairness, the question you asked me in the first place, the importance of it is... We need uh, medicine on uh, on a daily basis very often. I'm on 19 different pills a day myself mm -hmm. just to kind of keep normal. We need um, equipment, wheelchairs, standing frames, shower chairs, as I mentioned, colostomy bags and the rest. 
And of course, um, medicines mm. uh, and, and access to a GP. They're the things it delivers, which, as you can imagine, are, are, are very expensive. And Kieran, can Not I ask, mention, if yeah. you are approved for a medical card, is that for life? Or do we still have a situation that we see in other areas of medicine that someone who clearly uh, is going to be in the same condition or worse going forward has to reapply for medical cards? So, uh, have we got rid of that system? So in other words, if you are approved for a medical card uh, and it's very, very clear that you have uh, a, a, an injury that's not going to reverse, uh, that it's there for life and you don't have to continuously keep applying and justifying your need of it? I'm afraid not, Greg. Wow, okay. um, we've, made it, we've made it very clear that access to a medical card that we're talking about would be on medically certified grounds so that it's very formally signed off by a senior medical consultant or, or team that you have this injury and that it's not likely to improve. It would be brilliant if people with a spinal cord injury thought that they would improve at some stage. Yeah, I'd love but we know we'd all welcome case, that, yeah. but, but that's not that's not going to happen. At the moment, if you do get a medical card, for which people are very grateful, of course, um, it is subject to review uh, either annually or uh, once every three years. The longest at the moment that anyone has one for is three years. And a review can involve submission of bank statements, income, assets, assessment of the household income, all of that. So that people who do have a medical card still live with the concern that it might be taken away on review uh, in a year's time or two years' time or three years' time. The effect of that on some people is that they're a little bit scared uh, to get into the workplace because people want to get back to work. I mean, the ideal for someone with a, with a spinal cord injury is that they go back and become a taxpayer. Yeah, it's counterintuitive, and, uh, the system, isn't it, uh, uh, Kieran? It, it sort of is. Mm. Um, so what we're asking for is that if, um, if, if a person does have a card, that you push out the review cycle to 10 years, mm -hmm. which gives a person a chance to take up employment, to make a plan, because it's very difficult for some people to make a, a life plan if you think that your financial world could be overturned dramatically um, in a year or two years or three years. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for people to make any kind of long-term plan around that. So we would like to see that review cycle pushed out to 10 mm -hmm. years. Again, because a medical consultant, a medical team will sign off to say this is, as you put it yourself, a lifelong condition. And, and also it isn't too, going away anytime Kieran, soon. You want people, uh, I mean, I, w I would imagine, uh, and it depends on, on, on each individual, but say, for instance, someone who's of an age uh, and an ability to get back to work in some form or other, that it's better for them, yes. obviously, that they're, they're out there and interacting with society, less of a burden on the state. I presume, at least in some cases, uh, hopefully it, it leads leads to better outcomes because they're more active and, and, and feel more uh, healthy and as much as they can, certainly mentally healthy. So to sort of have a system in place that discourages that, now it doesn't apply to everyone, but that discourages that, sure. Kieran, it really beggars belief. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. No one can make, I don't think anyone could make a, a constructive and meaningful argument to me to suggest that this is a good idea the way we're doing it right now. And that's the means test. That's the way I test. That's the test for things in my view. It is, and we don't understand fully the rationale behind uh, behind the non-provision of it on medically certified grounds. And we don't fully understand the rationale of the review system and the review cycle being so short. And you put your finger on it, Greg, one of the traditional problems uh, that spinal cord injuries uh, as a group found talking to people is social and employment isolation is a big problem for people. Um, getting around when you're mob mobility impaired is hard enough. Um, I, I live in Dublin, so I have at least access to public transport network. Um, as you say yourself, there are 78 people in Donegal, and I know Inishon pretty well because I go on holidays to Kuldaf on a regular basis to uh, to McGrory's, and I, um, I know that the public transport but it's tough, yeah. and the, the, the notion of being isolated is much more mm -hmm. uh, acute. 
And also to uh, Kieran, um, you know, we talk of 78 people and their families with spinal cord injury. You know, are they visible? Uh, are they being discouraged from being, uh, you know, back at work, back at education, where it might suit them? Obviously, that's not going to be for everyone. Do you know what I mean? Or are they, uh, because of the system, sort of not seen like they should be? OK, Kieran. well, listen, I hope... Uh, 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 sorry, Kieran. did you want to add something? Sorry. No, not at all, Greg. Not at all. Okay. No. I just want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And, uh, and I hope... thank you very much for having me. And, and, a, and, a, and a hello to all the spinal cord injury service users, all 78 of them yeah. in Donegal, whom I hope are all Highland Radio uh, listeners. Okay, well, 80% of them may be, according to the statistics. <laughs> uh, Kieran, we look forward to you having you back in, in the show in the not-too-distant future. Have a lovely day, please. Greg. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, take indeed. care. Bye bye. Kieran Fitzgerald, a former Garda Ombudsman Commissioner, also an RT producer, and Kieran himself was paralysed, uh, had an awful experience, uh, spent a long time in Spain where he had uh, the accident, uh, a month in a coma after the fall off of, of, of a pier, um, and uh, also then spent a long time in Dublin. Uh, hospitals and went through intensive rehabilitation and it was after that intensive rehabilitation that Kieran himself uh, became a member of the Goddess Yukana Ombudsman Commission uh, his term of office ending a couple of years ago but as you can hear from Kieran, incredibly busy in terms of um, raising awareness and working with that organisation the county's number one talk show, the nine till noon show on Highland Radio. Join us this Friday on Around the Northwest for a special show live from the Radisson Blue Hotel in Letterkenny. Paul and his staff are celebrating 20 years of the hotel in the heart of the town with refreshments and some live music from the Letterkenny Ukulele Orchestra. That's all happening this Friday, the 29th, for a milestone celebration at the Radisson Blue Hotel, Letterkenny, live on Around the North. West. Don't miss the incredible Legal Dairy London Dairy Warehouse Clearance Sale with up to 70% off all your Middle Isle favourites this weekend. Find us at the old Legal Dairy London Dairy Store, Buncranor Road, this Thursday, the 20th of September to Sunday, the 1st of October. See you there. Wake up, wake up. It's Mattress Madness at Easy Living Furniture with up to 50% off all mattresses, pillows and mattress protectors with 0% interest-free finance available. Now is the perfect time to gift yourself a better night's sleep with the mattress of your dreams. Speak to one of our sleep specialists today. Massive mattress sale now on with all mattresses reduced in Easy Living Furniture. Presently retail park or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. We go through a lot to connect with our family. That's why Vodafone Red Family now rewards you with a minimum of 20 euro off every month when you add broadband to your plan. So moments like getting the dog they desperately wanted can be more rewarding after you've fed it, walked it, cleaned it, played with it, walked it, taken it to the vet and walked it again. Search Vodafone Red Family or go in store. Vodafone. Together we can. Offers object to being a third to six connection joining a Red Family account on a Bill Pay Mobile or Vodafone Home Broadband plan. For full terms, see vodafone.ie forward slash Red Family. Creative Landscaping Works are the Donegal distributors of millboard cladding and decking. Thanks to its unique polymer resin construction, this decking and cladding doesn't deteriorate like natural wood and won't be beaten for durability. It also has superb slip resistance even when wet and every board is produced using recycled materials. Live life outside with Millboard at Creative Landscaping Works, listening in Letterkenny. See creativelandscapingworks.com. Highland Radio time checks with Expressway. Travel Route 32 from Letterkenny to Dublin when you book online and travel for less. Expressway, bringing you the time at... Um, the time's 24 minutes past 11. It's Wellness Wednesday time. We're joined in studio, uh, well, remotely, by Justin McDermott, fundraising manager at Jigsaw. Good morning to you. Uh, Justin, can you hear me okay? I can't hear you. I can, Greg. How oh, yes, I morning? have you. I have you. Okay, good stuff. Can I say before we begin, and, and anyone watching on Zoom or on, on our stream will note, you have a fabulous moustache. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for that compliment to kick us off from the, oh. the show, Greg. Can I say you have a very 
fantastic looking beard as well, if I may say so myself. Right, OK. I think there's a slight delay in the line, but we'll work through. We're talking about Ireland's first National Compliment Day taking place this Friday, the 29th of September. It's free and it's so uh, bloody easy for us to be nice to each other and pay ourselves a compliment. So tell us how the day is going to unfold and who's involved in it. And I suppose really the idea behind it, Justin. Yeah, so National Compliment Day is um, it's a, a a day where we in Jigsaw are celebrating the power of kindness um, in, in helping and supporting the mental health and well-being of young people in our community. And Greg, I think we all agree, uh, Irish people, and I'm sure your listeners in Donegal are no different, have a very complex relationship with, with uh, compliments. Uh, we tend to get somewhat dismissive and a bit embarrassed, but I think if we all remember our own lives and those times we might have gone through a bad day or somebody might have said something really nice and kind to us, that it's something that, that made us feel good in that moment and could have potentially changed our outlook on ourselves that day or indeed our outlook um, uh, uh, on life in general. And we know from our work in Jigsaw supporting the mental health and well-being of young people um, how important a kind word and, and kindness and compassion are to supporting a young person through a difficult time. So. We just uh, were inspired with with the idea that, well, why don't we, in a world that seems very dark at times and seems very, very uh, scary, um, that we would take the opportunity to try and celebrate the power of kindness and compassion, specifically when it comes to supporting our mental health and the mental health of the young people that we all love about and care for. Yes, and we're all different, and some of us are more receptive to compliments and also to uh, even commentary that doesn't seem too negative, like, yeah, do you, you're very tired looking today. That's enough mm -hmm. for some people, depending on their on, 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 on uh, the type of person they are or their mental state, that can sort of detract from their day as well. Do you know what I mean? Now, some people might say, oh, people are very, very sensitive, but everyone's different. So my point being is that maybe the compliment that you give someone on Friday, that's the pick-me-up they need, and as you quite rightly say, might be enough to make them feel good for the rest of the day. Absolutely. And look, we never really know what another person is, is going through or experiencing in their day, Greg. You know, like, you know, we, 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 we go to work, we go to school, we go to college. You know, we, we interact with our family members and our friends on a daily basis. But we ever truly know what people are thinking and what they're experiencing. And, and that's why, again, you know, from our work uh, in, in Jigsaw meeting and, and supporting young people with their mental health day in, day out, um, there in Pierce Road and Letterkenny and across our other locations in, in, in Ireland, is that... On many occasions, it is the young person will 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 say that it is the kind word, the kindness that they would have gotten when they came in the door and met with Jigsaw staff members, and even the idea we compliment them on their courage to 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 come and meet us because you know, um, uh, reaching out for help with with challenges your mental health takes courage, and we recognise that and we compliment the young people who come to us, and many many of them say how uh, impactful that was to make them feel better about their decision to reach out and get help, and I think. If we again, if we think about our own lives, Greg, and think about the times where somebody said something nice, it could be when when a teacher might have said something nice, or a coach might have said we played a good game, or a colleague said you did a really good show there, Greg. I really enjoyed that. Um, that how that made you feel, and that does stay with you. And and I think it's sometimes that we we tend to, or said there be a lot of commentary on negativity. Well, we want to change that commentary because mm. we know the world is can be scary, but we also know the world can be full of kindness and compassion. And I'm sure the people of Donegal who continually show their kindness and compassion um, uh, will will stand up um, on, on Friday and help us celebrate National Compliment sure. and, and, and we do have kindness and compassion and we show it when it's needed, but we don't always show it. And, you know, sometimes we, 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 we can actually be quite enclosed and, and we might be thinking nice things but not say them. A lot of our interactions will be, how are you? I'm grand, how are you? It, it's a it's a greeting. It's not a meaningful question. Or we could have a, a chit chat, and and I might be thinking something positive, you and you of me. But do we actually relate that? Let Friday be the day where you say, oh, by the way, I must say, such and such. Do you know what I mean? Like it's simple, it's free, uh, and we're probably thinking it anyway. We just have to orate it. Is there a fundraising element to this as well, too? Because of course, Jigsaw is an organisation that does uh, rely on the complement of public generosity. Absolutely, yeah. No, we look as the National Youth Mental Health Charity. Uh, we absolutely need the support of people to enable us to help and support more more young people. And um, you know, we provide free, confidential, non-judgmental one-to-one -one talk therapy services. As I said, there in Letterkenny and Pierce Road with Damien and their team in Jigsaw Donegal, but also in, in in thirteen other locations across the country. Increasingly, too, Greg, we're like this. You know, we're doing a Zoom call. Increasingly, uh, in Jigsaw, we are providing 
more and more services online to make sure that young people, if they're up in Inishona and they're in South Donegal or places that we can't get or they can't get into Letterkenny, to make sure that we're there and we can be there to support them. But to do that, we need the support of people to enable us to do that through fundraising. So as you said, yes, National Compliment Day, you can support the campaign. We would love um, people to do so. Very simply, what we would like you to do on Friday, if you can show kindness and compassion to those around you by giving a compliment and, 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 and recognising others, and then if you can, visit our website, jigsaw.ie forward slash Eurostar, where you can make a donation to enable us to help and support and mm-hmm. show kindness to more and more young people. And it's very important uh, on programmes such as this, Justin, and we try and do it in a very constructive manner. We often talk about gaps uh, in, in our mental health services. And then in another piece, we might talk about the importance of reaching out. And, and it's possible that people might conflate those two things and say, there's no point reaching out because I heard on the show yesterday that there are gaps in services. There are gaps in certain services and what have you. And it's very important that we highlight those to try and close them. But it's also very important to point out right now that there are fantastic services is available and pretty much if someone reaches out they will get the help that they need at least in the first instance and that's the work that Jigsaw does and it is there so as to say uh, just a reminder that if uh, someone's listening to this and they aren't in a good space or they feel they need help Jigsaw and other organisations are there so yes of course there are issues we need to address but there are fantastic services like yours with a whole team of people just waiting to try and help people Absolutely, Greg, and I think I completely uh, um, um, and applaud you for saying that because yes, sometimes it can seem like uh, with commentary that that um, that the support is there, where in fact the support is there, um, and organisations like us and Jigsaw are there to provide support. Um, and again, it's not just for young people. Yes, we provide our our direct one to one support for young people, but we're also there as a resource for parents, for teachers, for coaches, for anyone who have young people in their lives. Uh, to provide again advice and guidance on how you can support that young person in your life. So I would I would suggest that um, everybody, for more information about the range of of supports that we provide and the range of information we provide, as I said, to young people, to parents, and to other adults supporting young people, please visit our website jigsaw.ie uh, to find out more. Um, and as I said, in terms of National Compliment Day on Friday, 29th is Friday. If you can wake up in the morning with the sunny disposition, because Storm Agnes will be gone at that stage, hopefully, but with a sunny disposition. Um, and to say to your loved ones and your colleagues and your friends and, and everyone else, uh, give them a compliment and then visit jigsaw.ee forward slash Eurostar to support and enable us to provide help and support to more and more young people across Donegal and indeed across the country. And in a pleasant coincidence, Friday is actually going to be a nice day, uh, the nicest day of the week. OK, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you want to, what is the nicest compliment you've ever received or how has a compliment affected you? 0866, come on, Caroline. Still waiting on mine. I pay you a compliment every day by turning up and working with you. You should be so grateful. <laughs> I play Caroline compliments all of the time and Neve, though she says I doesn't. Neve, I don't know, could be slightly more supportive, but anyway, she's got Friday to work uh, till Friday to work on something, uh, work something out. Oh eight six sixty twenty, and her dad Dominic's such a lovely fella as well. I don't know what's going on. Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand is the WhatsApp and text line. Or give us a call on oh seven four nine. Kieran O'Donnell's just walked in. Hey, Kieran, you are. Looking fantastic. Have you been working out? <laughs> I would say suave. Bit of a Tom Cruise vibe. Yeah, I'm hoping that we're going to have a uh, compliment day every day. Greg. Yeah, I just have to say, the way you come into the... It's the confidence with which you walk. Easy on now. Easy. I'm, I'm Easy just, on now. I'm serious. Every Okay, uh, compliments, keep them coming. Uh, keep them, start them. You never get any. Craig Hayes, will you shut up? Get off the radio. Oh, you're the boy everyone complains to. Oh, it's 0866-25,000. What's that? Do you ever stop moaning? You know, you're a Fina Faller. You're a Fina Gaylor. You're a Shinner. You always give those independents an easy ride. <laughs> Story of my life, Kieran. But I love it. 0866025000, WhatsApps and texts that number. What's the best compliment you've received? Pass on a compliment to someone. We might tie this in with the, uh, and that's entertainment as well on Friday. Uh, okay, uh, Kieran O'Donnell is with me, but I do have to take a break. We're going to be chatting to, uh, by the way, just to remind you, Friday is National Compliment Day. And I just want to say thank you. You're all fantastic. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And you're all brilliant people. And uh, fantastic brilliant okay but i will come back with more compliments on friday
Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Go full legal and catch these fresh offers. Like our two salmon darns were 4 35 now 3 69 A huge 51% off sweet and juicy conference pairs, now 129 And our frozen board bee approved deluxe Irish Angus beef quarter pounders are 20% off on Lidl Plus. Go on, shop without compromise. Go full legal today. For the biggest names in perfumes and aftershaves, visit McGee's Chemist Letter Kenny, Dior, Armani, and Hugo Boss, Victor and Rolf, Marc Jacobs, and Lancome. Also Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Prada, and many more. From timeless classics to celebrity favorites, there's a perfume or aftershave for everyone at McGee's Chemist Letter Kenny and online at McGee's.ie. Hi, Nathan Carter here, and I'm delighted to say I've just had two installations from Cherry Wall Kitchens and Bedrooms, and I have to say their attention to detail is second to none. With their sleek design and craftsmanship, your dream kitchen is just a visit away. So why not head over to Cherry Moore Kitchens and Bedrooms and let the magic begin? Cherry Moore Kitchens and Bedrooms, Donegal Town. More kitchens your way since 1996. Visit cherrymore.ie or call 97 25822 to book your free design appointment. Ireland has been home to many remarkable people, like Mary Ward, a pioneering scientist and a celebrated author. In 1869, in Burr County, Offaly, while traveling... Mary Ward was the first person in the world to be killed in a car crash. Since her death, too many lives have been lost on Irish roads. It's time we saw our last. Vision Zero. No deaths or serious injuries on Irish roads by 2050. Brought to you by the Road Safety Authority. Opening this weekend in Bundoran. World Matchmaking Festival in four venues with the Tumble and Paddies, Derek Ryan, David James, Johnny Brady, Kieran Rosney, Abba Esk, Blind Date, Speed Dating, and much, much more. Tickets at the door. Log on to showtours.ie for full details. One Stop Motor Shop Letterkenny are holding a charity car show and open day this Sunday from 11am in aid of the Donegal Hospice and Bumbleland's Children's Ambulance Service featuring classic and vintage cars, modified cars, supercars and much more. The Bernard Harbour Show will be live from 12 midday and there's refreshments, goodie bags for exhibitors, bouncy castle for the kids and raffles on the day. So join us this Sunday from 11am at the One Stop Motor Shop Charity Car Show. Business Matters in association with ATU Donegal Faculty of Business. Now is the time to realise your potential by enrolling on the part-time degree in business. Only three years with one evening per week on campus and another online. Open up your future by contacting the faculty office on 9186206 or visit lyit.ie today. So every Wednesday around about this time, uh, we release a podcast on our website and on platforms such as and including... Uh, Spotify and iTunes, and excluding all others, it's those two. Um, and it is uh, presented and produced uh, by Kieran O'Donnell, and he comes in on a Wednesday to talk about it. Hi, Kieran. Good morning, Greg. Right. Okay. So uh, it's another busy one. We'll get to that in a moment. But as uh, you are kind enough to put together some news for us, let's start with that. So, uh, Zeus extending. Yeah, the Zeus factory in Lily Kenny, Greg, is, ex- is seeking permission to extend its facility at the ADA Business Park. The company is planning alterations and an extension to the plant and the application also includes the addition of 208 parking spaces and new illuminated external signage. So a decision on this application will be made by Donegal County Council in November. All right, good stuff. Uh, interesting uh, event coming up where you can uh, meet those behind some of your favourite crafts, I presume. Yes, the Meet the Makers Donegal Craft Showcase will take place at Loch Est Castle in Donegal Town on Friday, October the 20th. The event will feature unique design-related products and fashion knitwear, jewellery, gifts and home accessories. And while the event is free, Places are limited, so to secure a place, check out Donegal Local Enterprise uh, Office social media platforms. All right, good stuff. Now, a PhD opportunity, which is actually funded as emerged. Yeah, ATU Donegal has a fully funded full-time PhD opportunity available to investigate student mental health and well-being on the island of Ireland. So this application, uh, the deadline is the is Friday, this Friday, Greg, this September 29th at 12 noon. And for more information, uh, apply to lyit.ie forward slash 
postgraduate research opportunities. Fair play. Uh, I do wonder sometimes, though, about the naming of these things, uh, because, of course, there are off- offshore islands and people might wonder, am I included? Of course they yeah. are, but, you know, words are important. You didn't yeah. name it, someone did. Yeah. But anyway, be that as it may. Um, right, new online PR service launch. Yeah, Ireland's first online PR service to fill a gap in the market for SMEs with limited time and budgets has been launched by the owner of Inish Communications, Trish Higley. Trish, who previously worked as a journalist with BBC and the Irish Times, says it offers high-quality interactive tools combined with one-to-one expert mentoring. So the Innes Expertise PR Toolkit is a custom-built integrated system for creating plans and a calendar data. It's going to be specific to the client and combined with one-to-one online mentoring sessions. So for more information, check out innescommunications.com. Radio now the Radisson Hotel. Believe it or not, two decades yeah. in situ there. I just heard the jingle on the way up there. Um, Paul Byrne and his team are this week celebrating 20 years in business, and to mark the milestone, he's inviting members of the public to call into the hotel on Friday between 12 noon and 4:30 to join with them and their celebrations. John Bresens across the northwest will be broadcast from the Radisson, while the Little Kenny Ukulele Orchestra will also be performing here after. John show. All right, good. I heard the promos for that. Right. Uh, Shall we get on to what's coming up on this yep. week's uh, podcast? Who's your guest? Yeah, this week, Greg, I'm joined by the owner of Khaki Evin in Guidor, Evin Odie, and the executive director of Asia Matters, Martin Murray. Evin Odie set up her baking business at the age of 13 and has been working full time on the venture since she finished secondary school a couple of years ago. She travelled to Dublin and Wicklow for work experience during her TY and got the opportunity to see how busy bakeries operated during that time. Even is currently participating on the Food Academy programme with SuperValue and works out of a converted container next to her home at Coshclary. Here, Even talks about the challenges she has encountered since setting up her business. I suppose there's not quite a lot a big network of young people like myself um, who are doing business um, and I you're always kind of looking to connect to those people and get advice from them but I suppose challenges for me is the fact that it's not quite the traditional route that most people typically go on that I'm the journey that I'm on um, so I suppose having that direction and you know constant momentum of you know driving yourself forward can sometimes be hard especially in the quieter seasons um but what i have found is from the likes of you know the leos and those courses that i'm mentioning that are available there like the the drivers sometimes when they're mentoring you along and they just give you goals to work towards um and there's just so much out there um so it's just i suppose trying to keep yourself involved and busy with it all now you've been um was a contestant in was the loop. The- yeah, that's okay. correct. And learned a bit more about her. Really, really uh, impressive and as much drive as uh, yeah, look, you would ever need. She's going. Like, her, she's only answer. 20, Greg, and mm. her, her, her business is going seven years. Um, got a lot of support from home, got a lot of support from Udris and local enterprise office. Um, when COVID came, I suppose the house became busier because her brothers were away. They came back, so they decided to embark on a COVID project which uh, entailed uh, purchasing a container and they modified the container and that is where she's working out of now, overlooking uh, Claddy River. All right, brilliant. Continued success. Now, you flagged, I think, uh, last week or the week before, a uh, growing business with yeah. Asia um, uh, initiatives uh, and, and the, your second guest it, it ties in with that. Yes, the growing business with Asia from the northwest. Knowledge Hub Conference is taking place in Letter Kenny, Greg, as you said, on Monday, October the 2nd and Tuesday, October the 3rd. I spoke to Martin Murray, Executive Director of Asia Matters, who are organising the event. And in this clip, Martin explains what the organisers of the two-day seminar are hoping to achieve. What we were trying to do, working with the partners, we want to get people to reimagine Donegal as a talent region with Letterkenny as a, a key business hub and promote the Donegal, Derry, Strabane, Northwest City Region Partnership. Um, people are surprised when I tell them that this City Region Partnership has a population of over 300,000 people. People are not aware of that. And as I say, to show examples of great FDI companies like TCS uh, and the work they do, Indigenous companies like Irish Pressings and indeed Electro that started from there. So I think it's it's a positioning piece. And it's not just the people in the room, it's the branding around this and the people we reported to after. And the follow-up from the people in the room and the partners are in self. Who's being introduced to whom? Who's being encouraged to visit 
Donegal and see for themselves and who from Donegal is meeting with the key Asian stakeholders. All right. Okay. So exploring opportunities there, no doubt, and uh, could be potentially potentially big opportunities yeah, here. Yeah, I think the, the I think the main focus, Greg, is an opportunity to network and to meet. Uh, one uh, stat or one figure that sort of stood out um, as relation to the Irish two way trade over the last ten years, that figure has soared to sixty seven billion. Mm. Euro, and they reckon by the middle of this decade that will exceed 100 billion. Can you imagine just getting 0.5% of that? Yeah. 0.25%. Yeah. And the other thing that, that Martin Mason is about is, is, is while Donegal is very good for tourism and hospitality, it's not the only area where Donegal is strong on. And he mentioned uh, two companies, uh, three companies actually TCS, Irish Pressings, and Fintru. And I suppose the opportunities there and the opportunities for small and medium sized businesses to maybe expand. And one of the key things he said was, I suppose, as, as, as if, uh, if they get the roots there, uh, the rest will come. So it's an opportunity to build, connect, and see where things can go from there. All right, we heard two tiny wee clips there, two 50-odd second clips from Evan and Martin. Uh, but you dig much deeper in, in, in the podcast. It's available now, Kieran. Yeah, it's available to download out, Greg, and it's also available, as you say, on Spotify and iTunes. Now, if people want to listen to it live on scheduled radio, it's on on Sunday. Yeah, after the 6 o'clock news, Greg, on Sunday evening. But what if someone wants to get in contact with you about the show? Oh, <laughs> Drop an email to businessmatters at henradio.com. Can you imagine if we rehearsed it, Kieran? <laughs> Could you imagine? No. Ah, two Johnnies wouldn't get a look in. I uh, know. Right, come no here. No comment. Uh, listen, the podcast's available for you right now um, to go and listen to it. You'll actually download it or stream it from the website. It's up to you, or you can listen to it on Sunday. Kieran, back with us next Wednesday to preview next week's uh, podcast. Kieran, thanks so much for your time, as always. We really do appreciate it. Good morning, Greg. Uh, we'll be back uh, with uh, the last segment after these. The eagerly anticipated brand new production of the Broadway smash hit musical Sister Act is on its way to the Board Gosh Energy Theatre in Dublin. Join Highland Radio as we make way to this unforgettable show on Friday 23rd of February 2024. Your trip includes luxury transfers, bed and breakfast at the Four Star City North Hotel in Dublin, your ticket to the show and a shopping trip to Dublin City Centre. For more information, call Highland Radio on 074 91 25000 or visit highlandradio.com. Due to popular demand, iMotors have extended their sale until the 30th of September with over €150,000 of reductions across all stock. This is not to be missed. At iMotors, test drive any car and enter our draw to win €1,000 cash. Yes, €1,000 to take a test drive. Ends the 30th of September. When you buy, choose one of the following offers. 12 months tax, free ceramic coating, 24 months warranty or your first finance payment covered by us. Low finance rates available. Check our website for all T's and C's. You will not want to miss out. Visit imotors.ie for more details. Harkins have been providing customers with quality fireplaces, stoves and electric fires for over 30 years. And now you can experience the elegance of luxurious worktop from Harkins. Their experienced craftsmen can fabricate marble, quartz or granite worktops to your specification. So, if you're planning a new kitchen or bathroom or upgrading your existing one, Harkin Fireplaces can provide a quote for your quartz, marble or granite worktop. Visit their showroom in Ballybogan Lifford or call 914109 or visit them online at harkinfireplaces.com. Tickets, get your tickets. Arsenal, Chelsea, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester United, Spurs and more. Home games and all the goals scored. Don't be shy, only takes a minute to win it. It's Cadbury FC's biggest football ticket giveaway ever, plus thousands of other prizes to be won every game week. Just head to matchtheminute.cadburyfc.com to get your match minute. If a goal scored in that minute, you win. Enter today. T's and C's apply. Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why. The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 7 million euro. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Oh, I wish it was. Good morning to you. Uh, we're into the last uh, 11 minutes of the 9 till noon show. Over 50 now and I have no money left at the end of the month for the pot due to cost of living. What happens to people like us when it comes to pensions? Well, that's the problem. And uh, 
Um, I think in this part of the world, you're probably in the majority rather than the minority. I'm on a medical card and I recently started a rural scheme. We were told that would we would be guaranteed a medical card, but now it's reviewed every two years. I agreed to do this scheme for my mental health. I think it's got more to do with keeping people in a job than actually serving a purpose. It appears no one in this country is ever sacked, especially in this country. If you get a full, if you get a public service job, here you are there for life. Aurora's Hobbits, we're all behind you, indeed. OK, they're all down there now in the in the piddling rain at uh, Letterkenny Market Square. If you can get down and give them a toot and stand with them, they'd love that. Good morning, Greg. I'm 70 in June and have 14 years contributory pension and now receiving a pension weekly of €172.90. Difficult to meet all the living costs on that weekly income. That comes in from John. Yeah, and John, I can imagine. Uh, politicians and media bandy about words like fascist to describe those in any way opposed to mass immigration. However, opinion polls have consistently found citizens want migrant numbers reduced to deny them a voice would not be unwise but undemocratic. We need a referendum. I don't think there's been uh, in Ireland consistent uh, polls. I think there's one opinion poll, uh, but one that can't be ignored either. Uh, great uh, here, we Scots priest in Cathedral on Sunday laying it on the line to those Catholics who voted to repeal the Eighth Amendment in 2018 and and you know what? Nobody got up from their pews and walked out. Perhaps the fact that abortion figures are heading for well over 10,000 this year and 40,000 since legislation. Yet still the state and media silence alliance rules. P.S. Plenty of help available for those wanting to travel for abortion. Not so if you have to travel for cancer treatment. Hi, Greg. More social housing to be built in Ballymacool. The council would need to upgrade the footpath from St. Eunan's to Ballymacool Terrace. The footpath is not a metre wide in places. Very dangerous with people with prams and small children. This must be addressed before someone is seriously injured. Anyone else have a say on this? Thanks from a concerned member of the public. Good morning, Greg. I received a life-changing injury a few years ago and have applied for invalidity invalidity. Invid I beg your pardon, invalidity pension last July and I didn't qualify. I have GP's letter stating that I'm incapable of any type of work due to my injury. I had to reapply again as my appeal keeps getting turned down. My GP says it's a disgrace why they are refusing me invalidity pension. If I came in from another country, I'd get whatever I need. This is just my situation. They believe the government is a joke. Hi, we had an appointment in Dublin Hospital two weeks ago. Hotel, car park, diesel, food, nearly €700, Euro, and we have to go two or three times a year. Crazy, crazy uh, tax. It's a it's a Donegal tax, really, isn't it, on, on our health? It's the only way one could uh, describe it. Rebus Aaron, they don't accept student cards, but they do accept leak cards, but you have to book it online. ATU is an agent for them if anyone needs a card. It's a great alternative if you have no other form of transport to a certain area, but you are a student and need uh, cheap fares. Hi, Greg. With all the strikes for better pay, I heard this morning that TDs are getting a pay rise next month of €109 Euro as they make the rules and hold the key to their own purse strings. So where's the par parity here? They're getting well paid enough. By the way, regarding transport, I've never seen a TD on public transport. Good luck to Eamon Ryan cycling in this weather. Appointments in Dublin have to uh, have to go up the night before. Kevin and Dunlow, thanks for that, Kevin. Uh, let's uh, see. Uh, there's some longer formed ones here. Uh, Greg, can you announce an oil spillage on the main road between the turnoff for Carrigans to the Anthony Piper cars already skidded off? Uh, but it's OK. Thank you, Greg. No problem. Happy enough to mention that. Um, let me see here. Greg, uh, back... Uh, back to Letterkenny University Hospital almost two weeks ago, my mother-in-law, who's almost 89, was taken to LUH in an ambulance at 8pm and left in the ambulance outside the ED until after midnight. That's over four hours. Then got into the ED, got a cubicle with a trolley and left on it all day. We were there, uh, we were in it at 5pm. She said she was desperate for the toilet but nobody was listening to her. I asked a nurse, she said they had to check with the doctor to see could she get out of bed as blood pressure was too high. So waited another 10 minutes and went back to nurse and said even if uh, we could get a commode uh, she'd be over ASAP another 10 minutes I went looking for nurse again as my mother-in-law was almost in tears and saying please please help me as I didn't want to wet myself the nurse uh, again futtered again I gave up and asked an ambulance man then he got a nurse to help her 
She didn't get a bed until after 10pm, which then included time in an ambulance was 26 hours for a fragile six, almost 89-year-old. The staff are doing their very best, but LUH is a disgrace and needs new management as if any business was being run so badly and so many complaints, the management would be chased ages ago and replaced by a team that are capable of the important job they need to be able to do. A caller says LGBT abuse between partners is also high and most abuse against men is not reported or counted in government statistics such as parent alienation, which is more likely to be undertaken by a female than a male. Also, please do remember that all abuse is wrong, no matter the gender, and that there's a tiny proportion of funding on abuse given to men and none on parental alienation organisations in Ireland. So they're mostly unheard. There's not one shelter in Ireland for men or alienated parents and children to escape to in the whole of Ireland, why they ask. Hi, Greg. Uh, he's not there, Caroline, or else I would have gone to him by now. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, hi, Greg. The HSC regularly... Ca Caroline can speak in my ear. I think it's only fair that your commentary to me should be published, Caroline, so that I think it, it works on other, t uh, other, other shows. You know, you go, hi, Greg, do this. And I'll go, OK, Caroline, and the listeners can hear. Hi, Greg. The HSC regularly cancel appointments in Galway on the day of the appointment without any prior notice to individuals travelling from Donegal, sometimes costing the individual for overnight stays, etc. The HSC should be made pay compensation for these cancellations. I never even consider that can you imagine uh, the public transport is a disgrace in this country the promotion of electric cars in Ireland is also a joke they are not carbon neutral given they are powered by coal powered electrical plants well they are and they aren't uh, you know 40 odd percent of our electricity is um, is green generated uh, by green resources uh, and also it's not necessarily what they are burned on it's what they omit as well so if you look at a petrol and diesel car it's uh, obviously mined uh, fuel and process but it also then produces in the burning process nasty elements so i get where you're coming from it's often said but at least uh you know 40 percent of the power is green generated and at least they don't put out anything nasty so it's not a an equal comparison it's a false equivalence but i appreciate your comments and i'm going to read it on here they are not environmentally friendly giving mining involved with the minerals required for batteries the batteries reduced in capacity year and year reduced range by around 12 percent per year i didn't experience that in the electric car i drove to be honest it maintained its uh, capacity uh, battery replacement costs 12,000 euro. The batteries are also extremely dangerous in the event of an accident, particularly if they catch fire. OK, and then they go on to talk about the pressure on the grid. Alan O'Reilly uh, of uh, Carlo Weather joins us. Hi, Alan. Hi, how are you doing, Greg? I'm doing good. All right, what's the story uh, with with Agnes? I don't want to be too parochial. We'll talk about us here. I think we're going to get a, a, a light passing. You can tell us about that in a moment. But what's the situation for our uh, friends down the country at the moment? So a large number of trees have come down in around Cork City and north of Cork. A lot of power outages popping up now around Cork and into Tipperary. The strongest of the winds have been Cork Waterford so far. Very heavy rain, some localised flooding. It's absolutely lashing rain here in Carlow at the moment and some strong gusts as well. So Agnes is, is really making herself felt in the south of the country. Um, the centre is just off the southwest, and it will track up along um, the west coast but the eye of the storm passing through the northwest through this afternoon and this evening. And because we are having the eye passing over us, less rain, less wind? Yeah, so you have some heavy rain and you will have some, some more rain, uh, but you will escape the worst of the wind. Still gusting possibly up to maybe 80 kilometres an hour on the west northwest coast there, but you will miss the worst of the winds. Um, but still some very heavy rain. The rain will clear and the winds will ease off through this afternoon. So for once, the northwest is escaping the worst of the Atlantic storm. All right, Alan, stay safe. Thank you so much for your time. We're back with you tomorrow morning at nine. John Breslin is next. Good morning to you. All you need to make your house a home at Patterson's The Hall Lifford. From garden furniture to kitchens, sofas and dining sets, all under one roof.